Oh, I thought we already left. Oh, okay. Start waved off. Ah, it's actually hey, like Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, we are in a group of five tonight. Where I'm rocking the 2311 racing shirt. We got our usual crew here. We have a good friend of ours, Noah Cornelius, representative from Rev Racing and other things he's got going on. Noah Talks NASCAR as part of the Added Group Podcast Network. How's everyone doing? How'd y'all enjoy Talladega? Oh, I was oh, sick, unfortunately. So I, know, I didn't Jared, get to go. Noah, were you there? Because I know Jarrett was. I was supposed to be. Um, Bagman from MRN invited me, but I had a 9 a.m. class on Monday, so I said no. School stuff always getting in the way. Well, yeah. uh, start yep. with you, Jarrett. You were there in person. I know you had to sit through the rain delays and everything, but what was that? Uh, what was the experience like? Well, we'll get to the winner, but I want to know what the experience was like. Uh, which day? <laughs> <laughs> uh whichever was better let's start with on a positive note okay <laughs> uh then then monday um getting in there i it was like so e- like it was really easy to walk in and everything except I, I was talking about beforehand i sunk into the mud because it it it, get, it got very 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 wet out there um the race itself you could tell from the very beginning in person just that like and you know how like on tv you could tell oh, it's getting really you know they're really wobbling around they're getting really aggressive but it's like in person you could see the cars moving in the corners you could see the guys with these super aggressive runs um i think that they went train racing for like eight laps i know harvick led the most laps and he for sure did not have the most dominant car uh did he really? wow yeah, yeah i didn't 16. feel like he led that many laps 16. i remember saying him wow. delayed a lot at the beginning actually oh and, yes yeah and so they, they tra- like train even the train racing though like there were a lot more people getting out of line blaney was getting out of line a lot bubba got out of line a lot um the penske guys stuck together for the most part aside from they they, they really dumped blaney a lot and and de benedetto <laughs> i noticed at one point dumped them and that was yeah. awesome um so it, like that was just what i noticed it was it was hyper aggressive like you could tell that they were being careful uh I, I appreciated the fact that they didn't have a, a ginormous big one. I know they had like a, a kind of big one, but I'm so used to these super speedway races having 12 to 15 car wrecks anymore that when I see only like a seven car wreck, I'm like, oh, that's not that bad. That's not <laughs> refreshing. It's finally yeah. refreshing. <laughs> I mean, I think this is actually like the first super speedway race in years, or at least for sure this year, that over half the cars didn't have damage. So that was really refreshing to see. It was, a, it was an aggressive race. It was a clean race. Um, and, and it was, you know, you, you really could feel the desperation compared to any other super speedway race I've been to the past few years. Yeah. I mean, they were two and three wide, like the, almost the entire race. Like you said, they trained for like eight laps. So I think that's they, right. Yeah. They didn't show it on the video board, but in the back, like there were a few dropping back and whatever. I know Hamlin was back there. They went five wide through the trioval <laughs> and like, I was puckering up. <laughs> so like i can't imagine how it was in the car because it wasn't like it wasn't like oh yeah the rick Ware cars are trying to wreck each other again no it was like hamlin was back there mm-hmm. newman was back there like it was experienced guys going four and five wide in the back of the pack and they were trying to to get up through the pack i mean like i was watching blaney for for some obvious reasons if you watch the podcast last week you'll know um and like once they got that aggressive Like the bottom line was useless if you weren't in that first row because you would get stuck on the bottom and those top two lines would just get it hooked up and they'd get that momentum going. And it's like, if if you were the third or fourth car in the bottom line, like you're screwed, you're stuck in that position. You're going to be stuck in like what he finished, like 13th. He he basically was 13th that entire last run. Uh, So it was like, you really could tell like the people like you could see different moments. I went back and watched a broadcast. You could see different moments that people made the wrong decision as to the reason they weren't up there. So it, it was, it's, it's, it's really cool to see in person. Cause it was like, how do I put it? It was, um, you, you, you could feel like the energy, you could feel it in the stands. Like even the fans, you could see people were like sitting there, like, you know, fidgeting around the way I do. And so it, it was, Probably the uh, racing wise, obviously, because it, it didn't finish, we're going to be a little skewed with how we view it. Um, but racing wise, it was probably the best super speedway racing 
I have been to in person ever. Wow. Wow. That's saying a lot too. Yeah. Cause mm-hmm. he was very, he was very critical about the, uh, the, uh, most recent, uh, Daytona, uh, Daytona yeah. package. Yeah. It felt, very if, it, it felt like the package before they changed it. Uh, it, it worked at Daytona to kind of, for the most part, get stuff a little calmed down. Didn't work at Talladega. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I thought, you know, they were two and three wide and occasionally four wide, especially early in the race. And I think I tweeted something like, that it was like the calmest three wide racing I think mm-hmm. I'd ever seen because you know yeah you could see guys wiggle a little bit but the pushing was respectful the pushing late at the end of stage two was not so you could clearly <laughs> see a contrast mm-hmm. if you watch lap twenty versus lap one hundred right. uh, but it, it it just felt like you know I never really felt like there was a big one coming I felt like they were just making moves and they were in total control everyone was confident you weren't they weren't second guessing themselves you know oh I think I'm gonna go to that lane no I'm not oh big wreck you know kind of that type of decision making you weren't seeing that early on so uh, that's the best kind of racing when it's action packed they're shuffling through the field but it's not they're not so out of control that one small mistake wrecks twenty cars like you said. Jared, I love that there were no big ones. You had Bowman get turned, and you had at the very end Priest get turned, and I think there was one other notable wreck. I uh, want I want to oh. defend Stenhouse really quick because that was I don't think that mm-hmm. crash was Stenhouse's fault. That was energy. No. Like no, it was a racing deal. It looked like a racing yeah, deal. It was, like, uh, you know, obviously, I was very mad when this happened. So I'll, I'll step in and talk <laughs> about this part. I was mad sorry. when this happened. Especially it was ironic. I picked Stenhouse to win. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so at first I was like, oh, Stenhouse. He wrecked it. Then I examined it, and it looked more like Chase pushed Stenhouse and then Stenhouse pushed Bowman. There's nowhere to go. And yeah. Stenhouse hit Bowman right at the point where Bowman is turning his wheel left to go into the turn and he's going full right. full frontal because he's the lead car. He's trying to keep it up in the front because at that point I think there's also no one. Rain wasn't far off either. So mm-hmm. yeah, just a racing deal. I'm yeah. laughing right now in the chat off topic. I've gotten like four different comments. People saying this is a Bubba Wallace shirt. People saying this is a Chase <laughs> Elliott shirt. Someone said it's a Bowman shirt. I don't know what that. that. Dude, someone, the meme. The meme. Someone, the now Thank they just guys. said it's a Sten Fraud shirt. So oh, I don't no. wear this. Uh, oh, good job, guys. I'm going to be at Disney guys. World this weekend. So I'm wearing Very unprofessional reason. chat. Very yeah. unprofessional. Come on, it's, chat. Is, if we're going to be professional, you got to be professional too. I'm surprised no one said it was a Cheater Boy Harvick shirt. I think I might have gotten one of those as well. I'm just wearing it because I. I like mickey mouse what's the what's not the like all right sorry hey, the on. meme oh, lives boy. on the meme lives on boys. oh boy oh boy <laughs> or or is it a matt kenseth shirt oh no he never had any mickey wins that i'm aware of kenseth 2009 they 2500 oh wait yeah that's right never mind it's kind of a mickey win he got a huge push from harvick or somebody i think at the right time he led for like a third of a lap in that race and mm-hmm. won the Daytona 500. <laughs> you know, who didn't though this weekend was Bubba. Like, yes. no. I think we'll, let's get into the, the yes. meat and potatoes. Uh, of this race. I'll get us started here. You know what? Uh, I just got to say, first off, congratulations to 2311 Racing and Bubba. Um, been a, they've had so much pressure on them the entire season. And we talked about this in full detail at the start of the season where it's like, Okay, Jordan's saying all this stuff about, hey, we want to be really competitive. We think Bubba's the guy to win. We expect one or two wins this year, something like that. And, I mean, a lot of us were saying, hey, like, look, I mean, it's your first year. I know there's some type of alliance with with uh, Joe Gibbs Racing and, you know, obviously Denny Hammond being the uh, the co-owner. But I'm like, let's just get the first year, you know, under um, – you know, under wraps and stuff, and then see how um, they can progress in, in year two. So I wasn't expecting a win from Bubba or Kurt Busch until, you know, sometime later on in the second season, but Bubba was way ahead of schedule. And, and you know, props to him, you know, Bubba Wallace, a win on a super speedway um, shouldn't be that surprising. I mean, um, Avery had put this out on Twitter um, that uh, he actually scored the most points um, on the super speedways this year, Bubba Wallace did. So mm-hmm. he's extremely consistent. Um, you know, as this win as a whole for the sport, though, it, it, it's doing wonders. Like, I mean, I've been a fan since 2004 and Noah, you've been a fan for a long time as well. I mean, you know, in our childhood, we did not have anything like this happening or whatever. I mean, Bubba Wallace didn't come onto the NASCAR scene until around 2010, 2012, around then started winning some, you know, a few truck races here and there, um, between the years of 2013 and 14. But, you know, in the Cup Series, there was never, you know, a, okay, you know, this African-American driver might win or this, you know, driver who happens to be a person of color might win and stuff like that, you know. And, you know, uh, you know, just based on NASCAR's history and, you know, some of the fan base and stuff, they can get really nasty about that stuff. Like, oh, well, why does it matter? Skin color shouldn't matter. Well, when, when, when you know, when 
an African American hasn't won in what was it, 57, 58 years there. It's it's a pretty big deal when someone yeah, it's a pretty big deal when someone wins. So we're gonna use our common sense here. Like, yeah, it's a big, pretty big freaking deal. And you know, just to see all the uh, attention from outside the sport to you know that this win has gotten on, you know, ESPN and even freaking ABC News at night even ran something like, "Hey, Bubba it, Wallace won this." Like, it was up there. I saw when I was in the car, it briefly surpassed the Facebook and Instagram hats. Yeah, at number one on trending. It was, it was crazy, you know. And, and also, just what are the coincidence? Bubba Wallace wins on the day where the the uh, angry racist boomers can't, you know, complain on Facebook. Oh, it's perfect, perfect day all around, right? But no, no, but you know. <laughs> I am happy about this win for mostly, you know, obviously, you know, bubble winning is cool and all and stuff, very historic, but I'm more happy for the younger generation of fans that got to, them. well, some of them got to see this win. Some of them were in school, but I remember those days when I was in school and, you know, during a rain delay, I'd, you know, have my phone and, you know, listening to the race and stuff like that. So I'm sure a lot of them heard it, but I'm happy for them because, you know, they can finally point to someone and say like, Hey, like this is, this is our guy. Bubble walls is our guy. You know, he's, you know, he finally won a race and, 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 you know, it also helps out with like some of the kids, you know, across the country who, you know, this is the reality. Some of them are probably, you know, some of them do get made fun of for watching NASCAR and stuff, being a person of color. Mm-hmm. Watch, I've been there. Noah's been there, you know, all that. And, and, you know, um, Jared's been there too, probably a, a much worse extent than me, but still, you know, I, well, some of the stories Jared has told me, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> but, but, you know, but basically the point is this was an awesome win for NASCAR. Like this was an awesome win for everyone across the country. It was, it just brought a feeling that I had never thought I would ever feel watching a NASCAR race before. Like we have a, a brother winning a NASCAR race in 2021, finally. So, Hey, the times are changing, man. It's great. It's amazing to see. I just want to step on, step in here and also say, like, you know, the, the the group who does say, oh, well, that shouldn't really matter or anything like that. Well, the, the truth is, it is a big deal. I'm not going to, in a way, like, it, it should not make a difference what color person is. Like, talent still talent, but also, this is a big deal. Just like with, if yep. Daniel Suarez wins the race, that's going to be a big deal. If, oh, that's going to be if, a huge if, deal if, when if, he if, wins. If a, Haley, if a Haley Deegan or someone like that eventually wins in NASCAR, that is a huge deal. So, mm-hmm. huge deals are huge deals no matter what the circumstance is, but in this case, this is the first time that we've got to, we've got to experience this in our lifetime. Yeah, yeah and I'm just going to piggyback off of Darian here, you know, um, yeah, I, I did grow up a fan, but I'm going to give it from a little bit of a different perspective. You know, when I interned with NASCAR over this summer with the diversity internship program, I got a little bit of a different look from the sport. You know, I never really knew how hard NASCAR was pushing internally for this diversity, you know, and and, you know, I got to meet Bubba Wallace last year. You know, many people that are watching this might remember, you know, the whole Twitter incident. I kind of blew up with a couple tweets. I ended up meeting him. I, I mean, we still kind of DM to this day a little bit when he's not busy. So, go, but going back to the internship thing, you know, internally from a business perspective, like this is, again, this is just really good. You know, I mean, f- I've been waiting for the longest time to see somebody that I can identify with in victory lane. And, you know, it's, it's, particularly special to me because I made a tweet about this bubble Wallace is black, but he's also half white. I'm, I'm half black and half white. I'm mixed. I mix as well. So and you're mixed as well. You. And you're mixed no. as well. I can't forget about you, Darian, but um, <laughs> it was, it felt surreal, you know, because growing up I had aspirations of being a driver, but they got fizzled out very quickly when, you know, money gets factored into it. But, you know, I was in class and I kind of had my laptop open a little bit. I'm sorry if any of my professors see this and I was watching the race and I was, and I was texting a bunch of people in the industry. I was like, are we about to see this happen? I was texting people on like, um, I, w- I was just texting people and they were like, hold on, we're, he's got to wait. And when the when Jordan Bianchi, I th- B- Bianchi, I'm sorry if I'm butchering your last name. When Jordan tweeted that out, like I exploded in the middle of class. I had to walk out <laughs> of class. Um, I was freaking out because, you know, working in this sport, I feel validated, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, doing PR and social media for Rev Racing, I get to work with, diverse young drivers on a daily basis roger proof nick sanchez isabella robusto just to name a few and that's great but there's a lot of people in this industry that are people of color that don't get to work around very other very very many other people of color if that makes sense so for bubba wallace to win i feel like it just kind of opens the door for more minorities to say hey you know maybe i can't be a driver but maybe i could work in something else in the nascar field and that that's kind of what it did for me too, because even before Bubba Wallace won, when I met him, I talked to him about, 
about being a person of color and wanting to work in NASA. He said, if you want it badly enough, just go and do it and don't take crap from anybody because if you have the passion, you can go do it. And that stuck with me. And that's why I'm going after like trying to be a sports anchor for NASCAR, be a reporter, because I know that even though I'm not on the biggest stage, I'm not doing what Bubba Wallace is doing. I could be a part of the change in NASCAR and Bubba Wallace winning. It just reinforced that. So like Darian said, I'm really excited to see the future of NASCAR because if Bubba keeps winning and more minorities keep getting into NASCAR, I think we're going to be in a great spot. And also just one more point I wanted to make too, just to add, you know, to the, you know, the whole validation um, thing you um, just uh, pointed out. Like, yeah, I definitely felt extremely validated, you know, watching the sport since 2004 and, you know, starting the YouTube mm-hmm. channel and, you know, um, late 2017, you know, in the following I have at the moment and stuff too, it's a blessing. I really appreciate it guys. Thank you. Um, thank you guys so much. But, you know, like also, you know, no one knows this. There's certain things that me and him have to unfortunately deal with, um, yeah. you know, covering the sport. I mean, it, it happens, you know, like you have to stay uh, uh, mentally tough, you know, in uh, most cases, though. I mean, uh, that's just the uh, the uh, the uh, reality of it, unfortunately, of the situation. But, you know, it was finally great to see him cross the finish line, win. And, you know, as a motorcycle goes by, finally great to see him win and cross the finish line, you know, and it just brought that validation too. like like the moment it was announced he won. Like, I, I wouldn't say I was like, like too too excited but like i was like oh, like like that that right. exhale was like holy crap he finally did it you know yeah. after all the talk after all the stuff he went through last year i mean to win at talladega too this he he basically came full circle here i mean all the stuff that went on 15 16 months ago in this country and at talladega specifically in um june of 2020 and then he comes back over a year later and scores that win. And, and also, by the way, um, to close out um, what uh, I have to say, he earned this victory 100%. So I don't care what anybody else is saying, but this was a 100% earned victory. So I'll, yeah. I'll kind of, you know, Darian, remember what I said when I was, when we were at the fairgrounds, when I was like, you know, just seeing how the, you know, that track was, how the energy was, everything like that. And I was like, holy crap. I like, I feel like we're at a part of like a, a, a big point in racing history. Yeah, like I had that feeling again uh, on Monday, where I was just like, I took a second to just sit there and like look around because like I stayed after and I just took it like just took a second just to to look around, take everything in, and I'm like, yeah, this is this is a big moment. I had this you know same kind of feeling at Nashville, like there was a turning point. I like I had the same kind of feeling at Martinsville in 2015, Michigan in 2012, like just sitting there for a second and realize like this is going to be something that five, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years from now, they're going to be looking back to and highlight reels, different things like that. Like it's, it's a major moment, obviously for different reasons than any of those races. Each one has a different reason, but it's just, it, it, it's, it's really surreal being there. Like, and, and I'm, everyone watching on TV is watching it, but it's like, it's surreal being there in person and just sort of realizing like, you're that little, you're a little small part of history. uh, I guess they fly by at 200 miles an hour. You're that, (laughs) you're one of those little blurs as they, as they take a picture of them flying by, you know? So it was, it was, it was definitely uh, being there live. It was definitely one of those just surreal moments where I'm like, you just have to take everything in. Now, as good as 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 happy as we all are for Bubba Wallace for twenty three eleven racing for everyone, here's the hard part of conversation I want to bring up because I don't want to shy away from this either. There will always be the stigma of it was a wind that came because it did happen to be raining. He had he had worked his way to the lead. Can't take that away from him. But now the the question is, and you can't shy away from this either. When will the next one come? And when will be the one where he crosses the final lap as the leader? And that's what, you know, you, you, it's one of those things that, you know, you'll never be able to take this win away from him. No one can ever do that. But the important thing now is, when's the next one? And the other thing is, he's got Kurt Busch coming in next year as his teammate. Kurt Busch is a driver who, no matter where he goes to, aside from Furniture Row and James Finch's team, wherever he goes, he can win somehow. So here's, you know, Bubba's now now true turning point, especially going into next season. Do, it, are you going to be a Joey Logano who it takes three years to win the next one? Or are you going to, you know, go out and start winning more and more and more? That's that's what I want to watch. And, you know, I'm again, not trying to say anything bad. 
But it's the it's the it's the hard it's the hard topic you got to talk about too. No, it's a fair question, and I was thinking that too. I was like, well, you're obviously going to have the haters saying, "Oh, Mickey win this and that." No, no, he earned it. He blocked two very fast Penske drivers and Joey Logano and Brad Keselowski, some of the best uh, super speedway uh, uh, racers um, in this era. Period. So this was uh, 100 uh, percent earned, in my opinion. But um, I mean, as far as the uh, future performances are concerned, I mean, like, yes, I mean, like you. It is natural to ask, like, okay, like, can he do it again next year? And, like, can he, you know, finish the whole race this time and actually win, you know, and win again next year? You know what I mean? So, I mean, like, with having Kurt Busch as a teammate, I mean, certainly helps and stuff. But, you know, I, I feel like Bubba Wallace still has a ways to go in trying to find – in uh, trying to uh, figure out – uh, uh, the speed for some of these tracks. I mean, well, especially road courses. He still needs to work on his uh, road course racing. Yeah, deal. If, if he wants, if he wants to actually be like a competitive driver in the way yeah. that NASCAR is going forward, that is the biggest point. I mean, we've seen drivers before, though, in the past. You know, even exceptionally good drivers, Kenseth and Junior are the first two I come to to think of for obvious reasons. But they struggle at road courses mm-hmm. off and on. Junior, in the case of his career basically Oof. the entirety yes. of the first 70 yeah. percent and they worked on that part you see other drivers you know for instance kyle larson like he was a, he's a okay good road course racer this year he's been on fire he's he's turned mm-hmm. that up yeah. so it's like it, it, it is definitely a point like it you know if you look at the, the share on the schedule i mean you have to be as you have to be putting a, as much if not more into road courses as you do into short tracks now bubba's good at short tracks especially martinsville mm-hmm. yeah. and bristol um but yeah i mean it, it, the the road course stuff needs improvement big time and like, i think they're going to be competitive and per, consistent and perhaps on a lot of you know that's the other thing i want to talk about is he going to be a one track kind of guy super speedway is his thing or or is he going to be able to also bring his performances to the other style tracks and if it means that you know especially if road courses get more seat time seat time is very important at the dirt bristol race he got into a truck to get extra seat time because that's what he that's what he ultimately knew he was going to end up needing and he actually was doing pretty well until uh mm-hmm. until he had a bad had, had a tire issue so perhaps yeah. get, work out something with joe gibbs to get into the 54 car on some tracks yeah uh, he, he he oh go ahead no yeah go ahead. um i was just gonna say we were talking about next year and you know i'm saying this because i want to be proved wrong i'm I'm going to pump the brakes. Um, I think there's a possibility where he could win once next year. Mal- more than once, I'm just not sure yet because nah, with this new next year. Yeah, with this, with this new next-gen car, it's not just him that's going to have to ad- adjust to more tracks other than super speedways. It's going to be the whole field. And, you know, even though I work in the sport and I've talked with people about the next-gen car, not extensively, don't 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 get any ideas. Um, I've, I just don't know what to expect. Um and I think, you know, that combined with you're getting a new teammate and it's only the second year of 2311's existence, you know, I think the turnaround time from this year to next year is going to be really key. You know, I talked to J.R. Houston and a couple guys from 2311 and they they talked about how how quickly they had to get things going for this year. They were meeting in Mike Wheeler's garage trying to, like doing team meetings in Mike Wheeler's garage because they didn't even have... A headquarters yet but now that they're getting a new headquarters i don't know the timeline on it it's it's going to get a little bit better but you know it's time you know like it's going to take some time especially again with this new car coming out for bubba wallace to adapt now if we had the same now if we were still running with the what is it gen 6 gen 6 if we were still running with the gen 6 next year i would say you know that's good because now you got the win and you can improve on the equipment you already have but now you have to go and work on new equipment you got like there's just so many factors that go into it next year and i'm not saying that he can't win i mean he just won that proves he can be a winner i don't care what anyone says but it's going to take some time and um i i know i'm talking a lot but the last point i want to make is going into the season i was i was very high on 2311 you know and when the season went on and i started noticing like why aren't they doing as well as i personally think they should be i became very critical and you know i had some tweets where i was i was tearing into 2311 and you know I got put in my place by someone I'm not going to name from the team. Um, I got put in my place. And, you know, I learned that nothing happens overnight, especially when you're in um, a first year team in NASCAR. NASCAR is a process. If you want to be a winner, I don't care how much money you have. It's a process. That's why you develop drivers from a young age, starting at ARCA. You don't, you don't just put them in cup 
when they're 18, unless maybe you're Ty Gibbs. But you get what I'm trying to say. It's going to take Unless you're Drew Dollar, maybe. Unless you're Drew Dollar. No, no, no. Never yeah. cup racing. Never cup yeah, racing. Yeah, yeah. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. It's just going to take some time. I'm excited to see what next year brings. I do think Bubba Wallace can shock next year if they get Jane Card I'm no, excited I, to see. No, I think we're, you're breaking up Oh, I think there, I froze. Yeah, I froze a little bit. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, go over that again. Say it again. Oh, yeah I, froze, yeah, I froze a little bit. Um, I just want to say I'm excited for next year. I'm rooting for 2311 and Bubba Wallace. I think that they could win next year, but uncertainty. So we're just going to have to wait and see. Did you guys get yeah. that? We good? Yeah, we, we got it. Yeah, yeah, we're good. We got it. We got it. <laughs> One quick Overall, I, I'm going to – I haven't said anything in a while, so I want to make my point with Bubba Walls very clear. I, I'm really not worried about next year at this point. Like, I think we really? should kind of keep this weekend as this weekend. Let them rest easy. Let him – you know, take yeah. some of the okay. immense pressure off his back for one week, like just one week, you know, because like everyone said, he earned that win at Talladega as much as anyone can earn any win at a super speedway race. Like to me, mm-hmm. the rain was not what makes that a Mickey win. The only <laughs> thing you can argue is that it was just a super speedway. Like you guys said, I want to see him win at Phoenix. I want to see him win at Martinsville yeah. or Charlotte next. Um, but, you know, he won that super speedway as straight up as you can win any super speedway race, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So, you know, looking ahead to next season, Kurt Busch is going to help that entire team. I think Absolutely. in some ways, the next gen car reset. I, I think nobody knows, you know, just like when the gen six showed up and that was not a completely different car. It was just certain mm-hmm. elements that were different. Right. Clearly some teams hit on it right away. Notably Toyota and Joe Gibbs racing hit on it that first year and were dominant. So I, I think, you know, that could play into the strengths that could end up being a weakness for 2311. But kind of like what you said, Noah, this year, they didn't have anything like set until about a month yeah. before the Daytona 500. In fact, I think it was Mike Wheeler tweeted that finally got our first car and it was like, Three, I four think, weeks before yeah. Daytona. I think yeah. he tweeted that like the night that we went live for the first show this year. Yeah. Oh, he might like, I, like, yeah. I think like we, 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 because we had a big talking point, I think about that at one point early in the year, where we're like, um, th- that that's not good. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think, and I think next year, obviously everyone's kind of rushing with the next gen a little bit. Everyone's scrambling, yeah. trying to figure out exactly how it's going to work. What's going to be different. What's going to be the same, but at least now everyone's in the same boat. 2311 racing was obviously more behind coming into this year than people. I think initially realized we all saw yeah. the shiny headline. They're teamed up with Joe Gibbs racing. It's Michael Jordan. Holy moly. And then, you know, reality set in and it's difficult to run well mm-hmm. in the NASCAR cup series, regardless yeah. of what names you have attached or what funding you may have attached yeah. timelines matter as well. So I think 2022 is going to be a really solid year for the company as a whole. As for Bubba Absolutely. Wallace, I think he'll have a great resource in Kurt Busch. Kurt Busch came over to Stuart Haas racing and I think elevated that program. He's gone to Chip Ganassi racing and undoubtedly made that one car look better than it's looked in years. So mm-hmm. I think he'll be great, great for not only Bubba, but the entire team. And uh, you know, but I'm not going to get too far ahead of myself. I obviously want to look towards that next win. When can he win a full green to checkered race? When can he win at a on super speedway those are all questions that are yet to be answered but i'm not going to look too far into the future now i'm going to sit back and say hey bubba wallace just won at talladega hey, super he's speedway a cup series years. winner cup iconic series winner. track in nascar in pop culture like that's that's a big deal and, and i'm just going to kind of let him let him have that and, for a let him have his years. moment and yeah. on, on that note you know who else is a winner mcdonald oh and, and, and booty <laughs> barker <laughs> booty <laughs> barker too booty and barker's and barker. finally a, finally okay. a, a cup okay. series winner as well. yes Yes, Booty Barker, and, and, and I do want to say, I think Mike Wheeler's promotion and Booty Barker going to be the the crew chief is a better move. Mike Wheeler mm-hmm. strikes me as someone who's more, kind of more, I don't know, stern, professional. Like, well, I, he, I think that's he struggled the, with Hamlin, too. Yeah. You know? But it, so, Booty, I, Booty Barker, for all people he's been with, has always struck me as, like, someone who's just fun, just wants to, you know, <laughs> just, wants, just wants to do what they can to, to, to try to have a winning car. He finally does, and uh, Booty is a very fun guy. I think he'll mesh well with Bubba Wallace. Bubba Wallace seems like a fun driver let's, too. Let, let's be fi- let's be honest here. Like Booty Barker seems like the crew chief who'd go and do shots with like Bubba and Blaney. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. He probably might have. Yeah, he might have done that after the race. Well, he played that radio communication during the red flag or one of the red flags. It might have been the final one. He was oh came over the radio and said, "Hey, go tell uh, Jim or whoever the gas man is. I like." I, Sneak over there and add some fuel to the car. He's pretty inconspicuous. <laughs> Nobody's going to see him. You know, kind of laughing about it. Like he was joking about you know fueling right. the car in the red flag. Like he seems like a funny guy. Like yeah. I think they'll fit in, kind of, fit together well. So, so we didn't hear that at the track because I had the radio broadcast mm-hmm. a little off topic. Uh, 
the MRN guys were funny as hell this Sunday <laughs> or Monday because like at one point they're they're like uh, Dave Moody over in turn two is it raining? He goes it's raining a little bit and they show the camera and it's completely dry. And he goes <laughs> so the, and and then they go back over and they're like all right well we're going back to Dave is is it raining anymore? No, it's completely dry. You put the camera over on me, and as soon as he did, it stopped raining. And then they cut off and go back, and then they're like, and they show the camera, and it's raining down there. And he's like, the moment that you you keep me up, it started raining down here. Just want to, I just want to put that out there because I, I I'm assuming most people watching didn't hear that, and like I saw Miscraft. I think he, uh, I think he tweeted about it, and it was like, I I wish they could have played that on the broadcast. Yeah. Um, but that was that was that was funny as hell. But they, they McDonald's should, they, they should have put that into the radioactive. They yeah. should have. Uh, but McDonald's, like, if that's what we've been missing this whole time, <laughs> that they haven't been winning, like that, like that's engagement with your driver and your driver's fans. I mean, they literally were liking like every tweet talking about breaking and also, McDonald's yeah. curse. And also on, they made on. a spam yeah. account too, basically. Uh-huh. Or, or no, yeah, they're not they're not McDonald's. Account. Account. They're Bubba Wallace stand account. They're stand not McDonald's account. anymore. Stand and, account. That's right. <laughs> you, you know what took me so long to grasp their logo and their banner was like broken. I was like, why is their logo broken? I realized it was two thirds of their logo for twenty three. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh. <laughs> they went smart. off, man. I, That's I, good. That's marketing one hundred and one. Well, I hope mo- I hope more sponsors do that because mm-hmm. it was it was really fun going on there and seeing this. And there are people who weren't even NASCAR fans. Like I saw this on my video I made uh, yesterday. There are people like, yeah, I just saw something a bit about McDonald's. I wanted to look up who this was. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. what we want. That's exactly what we want. And that, I have seen, stuff. I have seen so many people posting that they went to McDonald's after Bubba won too. <laughs> Yeah. Not to I brag. Have, oh, after you. Not to brag. I went the morning, Monday morning. I went and got me two bacon, egg, and cheese biscuits at the McDonald's across the street and a large Dr. Pepper. I don't want to say wow. that I won the race for Bubba Wallace, but I pretty oh. clearly did. So um, you're <laughs> okay, welcome. Eric. So I see. You. I do want to uh, say the official, the official Bubba Wallace McDonald's meal, because uh, he said that what he was going to do was he was going to go to McDonald's and get yeah. uh, ten piece chicken McNuggets. Uh, with a medium fries and a, and a Dr. Pepper. But if you really want to go all Bubba Wallace, you have to get that door dashed. Yeah, you well, Bubba, well, well, now that Bubba's won, he needs his own McDonald's. Meal. I mean, go look at freaking yes. Burger King. Nelly. Freaking Nelly, who, ha- um, who hasn't been relevant in years, has his own meal. Wait, you know what I mean? Nelly is still around? Yeah, he, well, yeah he's still around. apparently, yeah. He has his own Burger King meal, huh. apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, get that bag, right? Get that yeah, bag. Yeah, so Bubba needs his own meal now. Let's yeah. dream. Uh, but so Bubba wasn't the only one on track, though. I want to shout a few people out because I, I was going through. Uh, so Chris Busher, good super speedway racer. He finished sixth. By the way, one, one last thing about Bubba. One. Yeah, one one last thing about Bubba. He he, he won me over a hundred bucks this weekend. So uh, that, <laughs> he won that's, he that's won a lot thing. of people so, a lot of money. I I, I think money. Jared made like a hundred something. I made a hundred thirty. So we all did pretty good because of Bubba. So yeah. Eric Jones finished ninth. Anthony Alfredo got his first top first ten. Top. Good for him. Good for so that him. That was good to see. And and I want I don't have him on here because he didn't finish too hot after after the first red flag. But Cody Ware getting that TV time. I'm assuming yeah. they put him on TV. Oh, um, no. They didn't put him on TV. No, no. Not really. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. T- it's on MRN. I mean, he didn't even get a freaking interview either. Are you yeah, serious? Yeah, he didn't get an interview. No, he didn't. Yeah, they he they interviewed him um, first on MRN. Hey, yeah. they didn't interview the winner of the truck race. So I think, you know, yeah, yeah. did we really think Cody oh, that's, that's Fox. <laughs> that's Fox. We that's expect Fox. that. Yeah. Um, and then I want to shout this guy out. I know that usually we don't shout out 19th place finishes, but Quinn Hope. Hey, let's go. Yes. Top 20. Before that team is done forever. Yay, top wow. 20. Let's oh, wow. bring the mood down, Darian. Come Dang. on. Just, that's just the reality. It. That's the reality. And they, and they announced it on his birthday. <laughs> I know. Oh, it's even worse. They did. Yeah, they, they it, leaked. Did. it leaked on his birthday, too. That's, that's foul. Fun. Yeah. Happy birthday! You're unemployed. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Apparently, Cody Ware said "poggers" on the radio, and but they didn't play it on TV or on Radioactive. Unfortunately, what, what, what's with Radioactive missing these oh, like marquee? Well, they didn't play it at Talladega either. Because I mean, I, I say there. unfortunately, maybe fortunately, because I think there was more to the quote than that. It was it was kind of cringe. I'm not gonna lie. I think it's cringe, <laughs> but I don't mean to hate on Cody Ware. He, he had yeah. a, a good but, day by their standards. Which, yeah, by the way, job. 
we're having a good day too. I hope, we hope you are. Click that like button. Yes, click the, like button. Like, click the like button. Support these button. guys. They rock. We have got Thank 336 you. people currently watching us here live on YouTube, and we have only 90 likes according to my YouTube studio right now. So definitely run click it up. that like button and run mm-hmm. it up like Noah said. Uh, hey, on that note, we want, we've, we're talking about people who were having good days. Let's talk about how this affected them and who uh, who's crying after this weekend. Let's talk about the uh, playoff standings. Kyle Larson's crying. definitely crying for sure after this weekend. He's second in points. <laughs> I mean, but still, just Hendrick on super speedways. No, no, no. no. On super just, speedways, no, no, no. yeah. Kyle Larson mm. is not crying. Alex Bowman and William oh, Byron, yes, they are yes, crying. Yes. Okay. That is true. Yeah. yeah. And Larson's and like, yeah, another and super the bad, speedway. I the suck. bad thing is, <laughs> Both Byron and Bowman are really good at the Roval coming up, but they still haven't won there, and oh. one of them ha- has to win if they want to advance. Yeah. I'll, I'll read this baby off real quick. I'll run through it uh, for everybody watching and those listening. Uh, oh, I didn't Spotify. know they were that far down. So, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> so Kyle Larson is second on the grid now, plus 22. He came in plus 59. So he, he has won more of those races at the Roval, and yikes. Uh, <laughs> Joey Logano is third, plus 21. Martin Shrek's Jr. and Brad Keselowski, the two junior protégés, are plus 20. Ryan Blaney, plus 15. Then the last two in right now are very popular duos for different reasons chase elliott and kyle bush plus nine kevin harvick minus nine i'm sure the elliott fans are loving that uh christopher bell minus 28 and 10th and then you got william byron and alex Bowman stuck in the Ooh. abyss uh, oh that's bad mm. what do we what do, I think what do we got i know at going into bristol a couple weeks ago we thought maybe one or two of the hendrick cars were going to mm-hmm. be knocked out i think it's safe to say at this point, at least one Hendrick car is going to be eliminated after yeah, this yeah, round. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's yeah. possible I, for them both to make it. I, I think it's I think it's fair to all four can finish well this weekend, but the I think any of them could win. I think honestly, I, Bell, Byron, and Bowman might be three of my top picks. Bo- <laughs> like I, Bowman, I think if Hendrick knows how to produce a winning car for for the Roval, they've got to do all they can yeah, they to give him the car because he's a driver who can do good. His average finish is fourth place at the Roval. He's finished third, wow. second, and eighth at the Roval so far in his career. But it's 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 so crazy to me that Larson, after the season he's had, enters this round just twenty two points to the good. I mean, like one problem, one mishap, you know, and he could be potentially out. Well, Kevin Harvick be, happened it, last year. Be, and you're surprised. It would be a second problem. You know, I think the big thing with this format is you can have one bad race. If you're good in the regular season, you're fine, but you can't have two catastrophic Mm -hmm. races in a row. And Larson finished, I think, 37th at Talladega. It doesn't get much more catastrophic than that. It was total bad luck. So I'll give you that. Talladega has kind of screwed him over in that case. But, you know, the fact that he's still second in points after finishing nearly last just tells you, you know, it shows the value of a strong regular season. But yeah, he's had an awesome year. It's not something like what happened this past weekend. None of us were surprised either. I think he was. Almost all of our pick to suck last weekend because we all knew he had just not done good here. Larson no. on the super speedways is yeah no. No, we might we might we're talking about Larson right now, but I want to talk about somebody else in the cutoff line. Granted, he like he's not good at the Roval, but he's had he had his best career finish the Roval last year of thirtieth. Uh, Kyle Busch. Mm-hmm. Is only nine <laughs> points. In. Oh, 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 oh yeah yeah yeah. 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 Kyle and Bush. I, I, like, let me just read this off to you. Not good. 32nd, 37th, 30th. Mm. If my math is right, mm. that's an average finish of 33rd. <laughs> What's um, Quinn House average finish? <laughs> is, it, is Quinn House? Is it higher probably than? Com- I, I'm going to look it up. I'm looking it up. You, you can keep talking. Yeah. I, it's probably comparable. Yeah. So uh, I'm just saying, Kyle Bush. Now, granted, Kyle Bush has problems there, but at the same time, there's nothing really saying, oh, yeah, Kyle Busch is totally going to come out and just ball out this weekend. He'll do great. Yeah, this, he's going to be just perfect weekend for Kyle Busch to 12th his way into the next round. Like, Kyle Busch might be of any of the, the eight that are still up there. Like, you look at Chase Elliott, but Chase Elliott is awesome at the road courses. Like, yeah. it will take a catastrophic problem, I think, for him because he's going to probably be in contention for at least one of the stages, depending on the strategy. He should be all right. You know, you look at Ryan Blaney's good there. Brad Keselowski has a bit of a buffer, but something could happen. Shrek's good at the road courses. Logano good at the road courses. Kyle Larson this year. You don't know. I mean, this is one thing about Kyle Larson. Like, is he's really good, but when he's bad, he's yeah. bad. He's very, he's very bad. And he's yeah. already been rattled once in these playoffs. So Yeah. And then we talk about Christopher Bell. He won the Daytona road course. He's done well at the road courses and stuff, but – 
I, I think he's almost in a must win, but if Kyle Busch has a horrible race, it might be Christopher Bell making it in with Denny Hamlin as the only other JGR car. So, or well, and Truex, I should say. Dumbass yeah. attack on my part. Um, but I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the one JGR car out isn't Christopher Bell. It's instead Kyle Busch. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm just going to add this point real quick because I've actually accidentally yeah. overstayed my welcome. Yeah, a little going bit. a little bit. Yeah, it's fine. It's um, fine. You're good. But, you know, th- this is such, I, I never knew that Kyle Busch was that bad at the world. I always knew he had like technical difficulties. Something happened, you know, but, you know, I, I, for some reason, I have a good feeling about him this weekend. I don't think he's going to win. But I think he's going to do well enough that he advances into the next round. So, got to limp his way through. Well, th- thanks for joining us, Noah. Yeah, we know you got yeah, somewhere thanks, important man. to be uh, yeah. tomorrow, so you got to get going. But uh, yeah, fun having you on. Great to talk, Bubba. Talk Talladega with you. Of course. Yeah, I- yeah, it's great being back on the show with you guys. You guys got a great podcast going. Obviously, you've had one going for. You've had a great thing going for couple years now so it's great to be back on guys i'm gonna hit the road anybody who wants to see me i will be at the roval on saturday for the xfinity race in the pits but i'll probably be in the fans in a little bit and i'll also be there sunday for that big cup race so hey. maybe some people get eliminated maybe people don't actually they're all getting eliminated. You know <laughs> getting eliminated you know what i'm trying to say everybody's getting eliminated everybody's getting eliminated but it's, a- it's been a great time guys and i will catch y'all on the flip side stay groovy Yep. I like it. Later, See you, man. Noah. Later, bro. See you, Noah. <laughs> oh, and by the way, uh, Quinn Houth has one race on his resume at the Roval, and it, he finished 28th. So. <laughs> oh, my God. Quinn Houth has a better average finish than Kyle Busch at the Roval. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's wow. a technicality. That, no, that so, is a Mickey that, stat if I've ever seen one, but I mean, yeah, that is, yeah. that's a true stat. <laughs> Kyle uh, real Bush. quick, real quick, before we get, before we get to it, um, make sure you can listen to Noah's podcast, Noah Talks and NASCAR on the Out of the Groove Podcast Network. So yep. check it out. Make sure you Groovy know you, know you know. You can see the latest from all of us, including mm-hmm. Noah. So go check that out. Kyle <laughs> Busch is the only person that I know that has, ra- has literally rage quitted a real race, and they it has happened twice at the Roval. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about the Roval at the end. Yeah. Well, we're, yeah. we're, we're yeah. spoiling we're our have predictions. But the Roval's so <laughs> I'm not really fun. It's so much well, fun, right? But we do have playoff fun. stuff after Talladega. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, we're looking here. I, I, I've given my piece on, on Kyle Busch. Who do you guys think is most in trouble, most possible to move up? Uh, I, which I think Bell has a real good shot at winning this week, and I don't know mm. that he's my pick yet. I don't want to spoil that or commit to that just yet. But Christopher Bell won at the Daytona Road Course this year. He's been, uh, he was, I think, second at Road America as well, um, and he had really good speed at Daytona or at Talladega. I'm sorry. He, I know he was getting pushed by Hamlin a lot, and Hamlin was, you know, he, we know how great he is. But Christopher Bell has got some momentum, and he's he needs probably to win, but he could get a he might be able to escape if he finishes like top three in the stages. I don't know. Yeah, see, like the Roval can be so unpredictable sometimes, though. So, like, you can get, like, a couple of guys who drop below the cut line, you know, out of nowhere, you know. So, I'd say right now, Harvick and Bell are are uh, my two best bets to advance. Uh, I think Kyle Busch is the, definitely the one that you got to watch out for with the greatest chance to go out. Um, and I think Bowman, just on the average finish, is probably the best one to to win it and get in, but that's, that's what he has to do. So it, it might help him ha- knowing a little bit more how you have to do this. Yeah. Just uh, make sure that Jim Utter doesn't tweet this weekend. <laughs> so <laughs> as we talked about, the race got rained out. Uh, you're giving me, some, you're giving me some anxiety there, Jared. <laughs> so yeah, the, the ra- but the race got rained out this weekend. So like we can talk about the ratings, but it's not really like, is it worth it's- it? It's, I mean, like I mean, they're, just they're go pretty, over them. pretty bad, yeah. but yeah, well, they're bad, go. but I mean, it's like, it was okay, a Monday. So like, there's a 0.77 rating with 1.16 million viewers. The last time I had to rain out on the same week, like, well, not the same weekend, Talladega weekend. And also, I believe it was like a holiday weekend. They had said, so people had Monday off and the race went to d- the distance uh, and it didn't stop halfway through. So there were 1.16 million viewers on NBCSN. Um, I, I can't remember again, it was somebody's rough estimate that, but when you look at the other ratings, and I, I guess we can get to those that way, you know, we can just get through all of them right now. Um, Cause we'll get to the other two races in a bit, but the, the Xfinity race, for instance, was up almost, almost 170,000 viewers from last year's Xfinity race on the same weekend. Wow. And the truck race, just hold on to your pants for this one. Up over a hundred thousand viewers from last year's truck race. Oh, the truck race! Crap. The truck race had 
was up 107,000 viewers from 2020. Had 569,000 nice uh, viewers this weekend with a 0.36 rating. Uh, the the Xfinity race had just shy of a million viewers this week. So it's it's it's. I think it's accurate to say that had this race went more than likely, it's it's probably gonna go up. Um, but we, but again, that's the role NASCAR has been on. I mean, that's what yeah. it, it would have been the seventh yeah. race in a row with an increase over last year. I look at that yeah. number for the trucks. It pisses me off even more that they couldn't wait five minutes to interview Tate. No, they had to rush off the air for <laughs> Boise State Boise versus State. Nevada. <laughs> I, which, uh, I oh, 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 oh wait, maybe, about that game. maybe it's up 100,000 because it was 100,000 Boise State fans that were anxious well, and wanted to watch Boise yeah. State. I maybe. want to bring something up because, uh, you know, we, we – we might talk crap about Reddit, but they have a good database when it comes to that mm-hmm. stuff of putting that stuff up. The Boise State game averaged about three to four hundred thousand less <laughs> than the truck race did. Ooh, so what? People turned it off. Like, oh, damn it, ah, FS1. Good like, God. Yeah, the truck, ra- like, truck race was like leaps and bounds ahead in ratings compared to the game that came after it. You see, I'm prime made- time, like, slots. I had made a point earlier that day on Twitter after the race. I was like, well, it sucks we didn't get a post-race interview, but, you know, college football is on. Can, that's kind of their priority to an extent, too. But, like, now that you bring up can, those ratings, like, whoa. Can we just accept that Fox Sports isn't trying as much anymore? They won't even send Vince Welsh to the track they anymore. Are. They are. They aren't sending nobody. Like, it, 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 it's like a five-hour drive to Talladega. I don't know what yo, it actually is. It's not, like a hop, skip, and a jump over to Talladega. Good Lord. I'm not saying that 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 Fox is going to leave the Cup Series or the Xfinity, but I don't think Fox is going to go with the full truck hey. one again because they I obviously don't, want don't care to. about I mean, it. I, 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 I don't. Mean, they haven't made any effort to add anyone with, with Mike Joy and Boyer so far that we know of. I'd like, rather Jonathan Merriman and what's his face call it like they were calling the celebrity <laughs> self or I, just, game. I, I want to bring this up. NBC Sports, actually, when they sh- what NBC Sports does their own highlight reel and NASCAR does. And NASCAR's highlight reel, I believe, was like, 20 seconds was actually showing any racing. Just crashing. The rest was crashing. Just crashing. Yeah. NBC Sports actually showed the highlights of people taking the lead, how Bubba got the lead and the crashes because it, it is a highlight of the race. It is a big part of it. Like NBC right now has their problems. Like, uh, like, like let's not push all that. It's aside. not perfect. They have, they have their issues. But at the same time, like their NASCAR coverage, they're actually putting effort forth. I respect that they can have problems if they put effort forth mm-hmm. and try new things. Like Fox right now, it feels like it, it feels like Fox has senioritis three years before they're done. Well, Look, it, I mean, it, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. It, I was just gonna say it helps with NBC. I know they've got uh, what's his name, Ryan DaCosta. I think he's mm-hmm. he's one of their lead people for their social media. Oh, he's good, and, and he's yeah. he's really he's a NASCAR fan. Uh, first, first part, and that helps a lot right there. But then he's just really smart on social media strategies. You know, I mean, like Fox. I mean, it's just, it's just this is just years in the making. I mean, like, I mean, first you get rid of the Hollywood Hotel. I mean, like, I understand, you know, cutting down costs and stuff like that. You know, like NASCAR isn't as big as it used to be, so you're not gonna have as big of you know ratings for all three series altogether and uh, in general. But I, I mean, at least show that you care about it, um, about the sport a little bit here. Like honestly, at this point, I mean, Truck Series. I mean, it's an amazing series, and the coverage it gets though. So, I mean, NBC taking over for the truck series full time, I I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind that at all. I'm going to say a hot take kind of related to this, Mm -hmm. but I I actually don't like Kurt Busch in the booth that much. Really? I I, I think he's not every race he's done anymore. I think he's really, I think his insight's pretty good, but his delivery, it's awkward as hell. All right. Yeah, it could be better. Like, it sounds like he's putting on a a fake TV voice and Mm -hmm. it just kind of is weird. Now, you know, fairness to him, he's working with Vince Welsh and Michael Waltrip, so he's not being (laughs) fed the best lines in the world here. (laughs) But I just, I, I think Kurt Busch. I think if he can get his voice, I feel like it's the same with Kyle Bush. When you hear them talk in interviews, you feel like they're just a one snap away from saying something really bad or doing something really crazy. And it's not, it kind of comes across in the broadcast as well. So I don't, I don't love it. It's not bad, but I don't love it. When they I were in like, the booth together though, they were pretty that was, good. That opinion. was good. That, that was, they were, they, because they were very comfortable with each other. I think, that, other, I think yeah. that's what it is. I think what he's I, just mm-hmm. not that comfortable with Michael Watchburn and Vince Well. Right. What right. I've heard of Kurt Bush, I like, I think there's a lot of potential there. Cause when he was in the Xfinity booth with Adam mm. Alexander, it was a lot better. It's awesome. uh, because I think I think Adam Alexander is, is a, a severely underrated commentator. I, I don't think he's a Mike Joy or even a, a you know sure, yeah. I, I, even a Rick Allen. But I I still think that Adam Alexander is is 
he brings energy yeah. and passion to his commentary. I'd but yeah, when I he was like on Kurt TNT, Bush, he was awesome. Yeah. I feel like Kurt Busch would be good in. You remember how like ESPN those last five years had that table with like Nicole Briscoe, Ray Evernham, Brad Dot- Dottie. Dottie, <laughs> Dottie, 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 Dottie. I feel like he'd be good in that <laughs> setting. I, I just, Dottie. I just always like bring. Yeah, up that's that true. You know, yeah. I'd forgotten about the race he did with. It was Adam Alexander and Kyle Busch, I believe. Yeah, right? yeah. That was that trio was really good. So I do think it's just the who he's working with, and probably calling the race remotely makes him sound more. Yeah, it doesn't. Well. It, that doesn't so help. Either that's way, a good yeah. point. Yeah, that doesn't help too much. I, 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 I would imagine. I just thought of a big brain move right here. Whenever we can redo the TV contracts and all that, NBC and Fox split up the Xfinity Series and Cup Series. And as for the Truck Series, they take a six, eight-week break, whatever it needs to be. CBS gets the Truck Series and also splits it with their SRX coverage. Mm. That'd be cool. I, mean, I mean, if CBS, I mean, if CBS is CBS interested... Goal. I, feel like CBS I don't want to wanna subject out. Alan Bestwick to having to call a race like Knoxville this year. <laughs> that disaster. <laughs> or Darlington. But he wouldn't talk about Green. Car the wall. Car the wall. Car the wall. We're going to get. Oh, you got a car the wall. I'm going uh, to get the ha- truck race in a bit, I mean, though. Uh, hey, it, it is just. It's a weird idea, I, but it would be a cool way to expand CBS's motorsports coverage. I, I, feel, I feel like, though. We'll get to the truck race. I feel like though Darian needs to blow out his mic pretty soon. I do. I don't know. I feel like he has that feeling he needs to blow out his mic. He doesn't have the itinerary segment. pulled up, Jerry. Oh, your of course he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay, yes, the poll, <laughs> the famous iceberg poll. Yes, and do we have a new poll record? Uh, we chance? start. We started a day late, but we were on track too. Oh, okay. Um, we had fourteen point nine thousand votes in Ooh, two days. Pretty good. That's that's uh, good. Yeah, in yeah. two days. Yeah. Uh, so we had 19%. I have my phone here, so I'm not just like completely <laughs> blowing it off. Uh, uh, 19% said it was a great race. 33% said it was a good race, meaning that we had a, a um, net positive of 52%. Uh, you can check my math on that. I'm, That's I'm way lower wrong. than I thought it would be, honestly. But we Rain had 21. Shorten. Rain Shorten. Uh, and we had, I'm not, I'm not yeah. surprised. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that at all. 21% say it was average. 11% below average. 16% bad we had 27 percent disapproval so it's going to be pretty high compared to the others um so let's see what we got here these these comments i'll get to uh, i'll do the first one instead of the last one from now on uh because that that will actually have a positive or negative here chrome diesel he's got the top one says uh what was seen this weekend is a huge reason why this track needs lights. We can, we, I, I guess we can talk a little we'll, bit about we'll talk that. about it a little bit. I, 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 I mean, it'd be nice. It's, it's expensive. The fact, the thing that bothers me is I think it'll cost like 20, 20 million for lights. They spent more than double that on the infield well, experience. They're, they're also right next. I mean, even if it is a small one, having lights like that right next to an airport, I know Daytona has that, but Daytona mm. also works with the track. Okay. Um, and, but I, I feel like that would, that would be just a bureaucratic. I mean, it, it would, it would be sure. nice, but is it is it necessary? Because how many other events does I how they like get on a uh, daily basis? Is, I mean, is it, it a worthwhile like, investment? Maybe not, but it is yeah. something I'd like the, to see, and it's surprising it hasn't happened. But you know, the, yeah. the, the problem is how much of a ROI, return on investment, can they get from that by doing the infield yeah. experience? Hey, they can sell more they can sell more opportunities to be into that area now well, i just wonder how many viewers how much viewership did did they lose you know so tvs are angry tvs gonna spend less money less money will eventually go to the tracks how much tv viewership did they was, lose by running on a monday as opposed to later on a, sun, well, did, on a sunday did i mean I'll, I'll be real though like it didn't rain for about two hours after but there was tons of rain in the area and it did rain before the race. Like I feel like nine, nine out of 10 times, these problems can be solved by just switching the start times. Like it's tracks like Talladega tracks like Daytona, where you're going to have rain noon starts is the best possible way to go. Like if, if the truck race started at noon, we wouldn't have had the problem on Saturday that we'll talk about. And the cup race, that's like the one out of 10 times we weren't getting it in on a Sunday. Yeah. And also one, one final point too, like Bob Pockers had brought up, you know, the whole tradition there. I'd never been there. Hopefully I'll uh, attend oh, uh, Talladega next year, you know, serious, the party, uh, the party atmosphere, all that stuff. And um, some people were saying, you know, night racing would uh, kind of ruin that. I'm like, yeah, okay, I, I understand that. Yeah, so. Like they're like, I, I, I have I, a few I, people I know who, who have been in that and, and are in that. And it's like, that it, it probably would. I'd like to poll fans that were at the track, campgrounds and grandstands, and see would you have rather them race on Sunday night 
or Monday afternoon. Hey, we can do that when we go next year. Well, we can, well we can I genuinely wonder. I wish we could have seen that number because I'd be curious because a lot of people might yeah. say, hey, no, I'm, I was fine partying Sunday night and going home the next day and missing the race. I was fine with that. I bet there are a lot of people that would say that. So yeah. I, I don't know. That's a fair concern. I don't know. Well, let's You'll get see. a few more of these in here. Uh, NASCAR is awesome. Said it was good. At this point, the race got cut short, but the whole weekend got first time winners. So that was cool. We'll get to that in a bit. Uh, let's scroll down a little bit here. Uh, Sorry, not, not, Avery. To, not to interrupt. That name right there, if that was ever the first comment, there'd be no way that could be a negative comment. <laughs> no way. No way. No, it would, it would find a way somehow. <laughs> uh, Chevy Block 550 said that would have been great if they went the full distance. Racing was getting intense. It was. It was. Uh, let's scroll down a little bit. I want to get people. Oh, there's there's one I actually hearted here, so I know I want to. There. So there was this one, like, Weather Boy. I'm not going to read all these, but he put the full data in the ch- in the chat in there of the entire gen six era of, uh, of Talladega races. I'll read a few of these main statistics. Most green flag passes were in the second 2013 race at Talladega, 23,765 green flag passes. The s- Most, 23rd, second 2013 Talladega. I, I that was a very that. competitive race but until the last remembers it for the last 10 laps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was a great race, like three yeah. wide the whole damn time, clean racing, like that's the thing. It was a very clean race. Um, most lead changes, the second race of 2020, 58. Oh. Most cautions, the second race of 2020, 13. Uh, least green flag passes. Are we shocked that it's 2018 fall? Uh, <laughs> same with lead changes. <laughs> there was only 15 in that race, and a lot of that was green flag pit stops. Um, least cautions, the second 2013 race, only three cautions. And there's plenty of data he has in there. He has uh green flag passes, lead changes, cautions for every single race. Uh, so it's, it's really cool. Look at what's surprising is the green flag passes actually go down uh, in 2020 and 2021 compared wow. to 2019. Like that, that surprised me. And the most green flag passes we saw were the 2013 to 2017 package era. Like that's just, that's surprising to me. So really cool stuff. If you want, if you're a big statistics buff like me, you'll want to go see that. Uh, let's go down and get one more. That's like way down in the chat. Way, way down, way, way down, 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 way down, down, down. We go. Uh, let's jingle octopus says it was fantastic. <laughs> Really action packed all throughout. Sucks it ended early though. I'm sorry, I needed to read that username. Say that name again. Say it for me. Jingle Octopus. <laughs> Jingle Octopus. All right, let's get to the first comment here. Uh, uh negative first and scroll down. Negative. Was, is know. that you, Eric, or is that a fake Eric? Uh, it's not not me. Hey, I, 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 do I, does it have a check mark? He'll have a check mark. Mine no, is it verified. Is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's scroll down to the first comment then. It feels weird saying that. So we're we doing positive or negative? Here? Negative. It's negative. I know it's negative. It's, it's got to be negative. It's negative. It's the yeah. first comment. I don't. Negative. <laughs> All right. What do you think, Eric? He kept putting his. Negative. Negative. He's not looking. <laughs> Jared, I'm Jared, negative. look. Look at his thumbs. Okay. Well, I'm just. I'm sorry. We have people to listen to. Uh, oh, yeah. So, yeah. Remember to podcast. Sorry, people. Sorry, J- sorry, Spotify. JD's Diecasts was the oh, one that screwed. left it. And he left a one word comment. Uh oh. Kick. Bubba, hey, okay, okay. so I, I, hey. I'll, I'll just call it neutral. That's a that's a yeah neutral, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Bubba. <laughs> Are there any replies to it? To like, does he like elaborate? I oh, like. Wait, wait, wait. If he said Bubba, everyone should reply Bubba. Bubba, yeah, everyone go <laughs> reply Bubba right now to the final comment. <laughs> but yeah, thank you all for voting. First poll. Comment. Let's get to the uh, Xfinity and truck race. I think we got mm-hmm. lots to talk about there. Oh yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Xfinity. Oh, that was. Hey, shout out to Brendan Brown. He's been on the show. We had him on like way back. What was it? It's, season. It's, it's been a two? minute. It's been a minute. Yeah, we, we I had, him. had him twice. I think. Yeah, he's and been on a few times. Yeah, we've spoken to him at the track in person and stuff. And I mean, it's cool to see that team finally get some recognition. I mean, outside of that one viral tweet that they had, like what was it? A couple months ago, I believe. Put it's, your yeah. name here. Yeah, put your basically, name here. Basically, yeah. looking like a better car salesman than me, and I was an actual car salesman. <laughs> yeah, yeah hey, let's go, Brandon. Hey, props to Brandon, man. I mean, like now the whole controversy with that. Um, I'm, I'm just making the joke. I don't. Well, know. well, no, I'm saying. Well, no, I'm saying. Uh, I was just moving on. Like, like, wasn't there a controversy during the race though? Like, or towards the end because of lighting? Correct? Wasn't there? Like, yeah. Hey, okay. race... and, and I called that. I I said it on a podcast last week that I looking at what time those races it, started and with red flags, I didn't think they'd get it in. 
Yeah, so, you were right. Yeah, that one, that, I'll, I'll be completely real. Like, I, I saw, like, I, I put a picture on Twitter. It was still pretty light out um i think everyone had no but the tv they were like they were like no no folks well, the cameras okay the TV i know cameras this. Make them brighter. the nbc cameras were way darker like even in the cup race they really? were way darker than it was actually in person hmm. like they made it look like it was you know like completely getting dark there's only one bit of light way in the sky it was waning out no it's like no no like I could see the backstretch just fine. They wanted to get like, out of well, there, I guess. <laughs> the, the, pro- I the problem is with those cameras, do they have any kind of tint on the lenses? And the biggest thing I'm wondering, most of these... They dry- usually light it up. Well, okay. It usually usually the cameras would make it brighter. At least how that's yeah. how they've explained it in the past. So, yeah, that's so, surprising. Okay, so my other thing, my biggest argument here, and I saw a lot of people talk about this too, at that point in the day, you're traveling on both ends of the racetrack. At some point, that sun is setting on somewhere... On that track, and a lot of drivers will probably wear like a more of a darker visor so that they're not getting. Well, they the can sun peel that off. off. I don't think no, they all can. Not, no, I think some are stuck with it. All of them. Some of them are stuck with it. So that's my biggest yeah. thing. I wonder how many drivers have really dark visors and they legitimately just couldn't see much either. I, I only say it because on TV right. they did talk about how some of the drivers seemed stuck with dark visors. Because mm-hmm. you're right, Jerry. I think they do often have tear offs, but they, I guess, were not prepared for this one i don't know they, they, <laughs> because the they probably just they probably were just you know going off of hey this race is gonna be in the evening i'll have the sun in my face I every just, now and again it's talladega like are, are we are we really is everyone just suddenly surprised that we go late every time we go to talladega like it's Again? literally every time we go to talladega hmm. we go over the time window now like, it's a big shock all of a sudden well yeah that's what i'm saying it's like <laughs> man i i I'm going in there with a visor because I know for a fact we're not ending when they say we're ending. Like, I'll be real. When I when I was there, I was pissed because I sit there waiting for this great finish. They're three wide when the caution comes out, and then it's they just they they literally called it over the intercom as they're coming through the driver. Like they're this time by, they're ending the race. I'm like, what? What? I can see. I can see, bro. <laughs> I'm like, you can't even run the laps see. under caution so we can at least finish the damn thing. Like, yeah. so and, I, and, and then me and, off. It, and then meanwhile, Brandon Brown's probably putting on sunglasses. Nope, can't see. Yay! Hey, I'll take it. I'll take the win. Hey, at least he won. I'm happy. I'm happy. For him. I'm happy, I'm for happy at least for him. He, now another one okay. earned. Another one now, earned. Uh, now uh, the post race interview. <laughs> I don't know. Jared, did, did you hear go, that? I, I, hear yeah, that? yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking, how can we avoid this? Is it? I feel like there, we can go somewhere else to celebrate a winner. You know, we can just oh. drive them somewhere else down, like kind of like just down the lane to somewhere up, like Victory Lane. We can call it. See, Victory see, Lane. Let's see, go to that, Victory Lane for the Victory see, Lane interview. And, 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 and it's almost like we can get this sponsored by maybe Ralph Home Mortgages or something like that. But, oh, geez, but we what can was, even sponsor the drive to Victory Lane? Like, we sponsor every. They Charlotte sponsored the race off pit road on the track last year. We can sponsor but, uh, anything. But the, uh, another funny part about that whole ordeal was um, um, whoever was uh, interviewing Brendan Brown, I forget her name, like she was saying, was like, yeah, like, yeah, they're saying, let's go, Brent. I'm like, no, they aren't. No, they are not I, saying. Okay. I, I just Dyslexic. got I just to say this. Kidding. <laughs> Good try, but she did know what she was doing to try to cover that up. Yeah. I, yeah. So I would, I, I'll right. defend her because I heard it over TV and I'm like, that doesn't sound like let's go, Brandon, but I'm not, I, I hadn't watched much college football this year. So I wasn't aware of the trend was, so much. So, so I was saying, like, what are they yelling? And, and to be fair, <laughs> You know, I was halfway done this right away and I heard I'll, it. I'll just say, Go Brandon does kind of sound like Joe Biden. They kind of have the same sound and the same letters in some yeah. cases. What about I can under- <laughs> yeah, but what about the first word? What was the first word they said? <laughs> I, F- I just, I'm just saying big crowds, half drunk crowds at Talladega might be hard to understand. I'll cut her some slack potentially there. I'll just say, listening on TV, I knew they weren't saying let's go Brandon, but I couldn't <laughs> clearly make out what they were saying, at least at first. I had to go back and watch the replay and see. Jared the- heard him. Jared, you oh, heard I him. laughed my ass off. <laughs> I'll him. be real. I laughed my ass off the whole damn weekend because I knew God. the whole damn time. I'm like, man, I'm not going to get mad by anything that happens bro, in any of the races. I I'm need to go to Dega next year, bro. I need to on my bucket list. I have to see some of these people for myself. <laughs> They're hilarious. I don't know. Something. Oh yeah, no, and I mean, I, and easy to troll too. I, I heard it and I'm like, oh my god. 
like my, the TikTok trend I, I've been seeing is coming true. See, the one um, thing I was um, upset about, though, I mean, this was Brendan Brown's first career win. Perhaps yeah. this might be his only win, and that kind of overshadowed the uh, the uh, um, the post race interview there. That was my well, only yeah, quarrel with that, it. But yeah, that is one thing. I, t- I talked to a few people about that after the race, you know, on over the phone, and I was like, I feel I f- I'm, I'm happy for Brandon, and it seemed like he was laughing at it. Like, like yeah. when they turned the camera, hey, you could see him. Hey, like, oh god, he posted that viral tweet for him. It's just more more. Yeah. more screen time like yeah that, more that viral. clip has been yeah. played around th- millions I, of times I, I, He's I still find it funny it. nascar posted it and then took four hours to take it, it, yeah, <laughs> it later. I, I do gotta say this i have seen um i've seen tons of republican po- political figures i've seen tons of uh media people that you would say maybe work with fox news they've all been talking about this for their own reasons but Hey, that, that is more coverage for Brandon Brown's first win. Uh, I guess. So, it's, sad, it's, sad, it's a lot of coverage. It's weird coverage, yeah. but it's coverage. I just yeah. I just wish that it wouldn't have happened because now you never can replay that Victory Lane interview unless you just oh, – it's a whole true. beat the whole yeah. time. But Did they um, interview him in Victory Lane? I don't even remember. Did they no, do another interview? I, no, I didn't no. see one. I think, not that I, 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 I think Second this is – Not that I saw. I, I don't know how you guys really feel about it. Personally, I have not been a fan of the on-track interviews. Uh, it, it was, I liked it. Was, it, at first. No. it was it was it was it was cool at first because I felt like you know at first it's like okay I see what they're going for trying to get more of okay it just happened emotion but now I'm like well, hey you can still get that from Victory Lane with the excitement of your crew's actually there. Well, yeah. Remember, remember the race, if I'm not mistaken, the race that really like solidified it was the slide job race. Mm-hmm. Like they yeah. went out there and interviewed Kyle Bush right after. And, um, and they were like, wanna, let's do this every week. I want to no. bring up, though, the reason why it went late and the reason why we're all in this position is because, it, in part, Sam Meyer and Noah Gregson literally knocked the damn walls off. Like they yeah. drove they had to the, repair the walls. Yeah. Like that, I mean, I saw that hit. You know, and I saw like the one at the end of the truck race in person. And even I was, I kind of recalled like, oh, geez. That got oh, I was, I was definitely cringing on TV, definitely during the Sam Meyer and, and Graxon hits there. You could it hear it. Bad. You could it hear it. And it was in turn three and you could hear it from the tri oval. Like it was, I mean, I, was, I literally, I went, I'm like, God dang. I, 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 I literally did this. I'm like, oh, 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 oh. Okay, for those listening yeah. to us and not watching us, we were all impersonating the, the, the crashes, I guess. We were all recoiling dramatically. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. the Gregson hit, I, when it first hit, because you could kind of see it coming. You're like, he's a, he's going to hit the wall. It's coming. Yeah. There he goes. Oh, my gosh, he nailed that wall. I legitimately was like, oh, my God. Like, I was worried for a second because he got T-boned again as he came back mm-hmm. down the banking. I was worried that he was you know, injured in some capacity. Obviously, he jumped out of the car right he's away. He's had a race. rough couple of weeks, he has. Uh, you talk Sam about has. rough weeks. Sam, well, I was talking about Noah Gregson, but Sam oh, Mayer, okay. yes, has had, uh, he's had a pretty much the worst half rookie season you could imagine. Mm-hmm. Six out of his 13 races, he has finished outside the top 30. Uh, that is abysmal. Mm, and a lot of it's yeah. not his fault this week, and I don't really think it was his fault. I think it was kind of awkward. Brett Moffat and actually Brandon Brown were in there trying to squeeze a four wide move, and it probably was not a good call, and he got no. the worst of it. But. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel bad for Sam Eric because we know he can drive. We know he's good, but he's it's good, hard yeah. to. I, I like Ty Gibbs as well, but it's hard to go see Ty Gibbs have all this success running a part time schedule, and then Sam Mayer's come in and absolutely been abysmal. <laughs> Just had horrible things. He's run okay at times, but like that Bristol weekend a few weeks ago across Arca Trucks and Xfinity, I feel like yeah. I, I I worry that that killed his confidence. Like, what was the NBA player who got drafted like first or overall a few years ago? Markel Fultz. Who then yeah. just like oh, yeah, got yeah. injured and then mm-hmm. forgot how to shoot a basketball. Yeah. I hope the same thing doesn't happen to Sam Mayer, that he's good, showing a lot of promise, has a rattled weekend like that, and then just can't get out of his own head. I hope that doesn't happen. I don't think it will, but it, I mean, it was the kind of weekend that I could I wouldn't blame him if it did a little yeah. bit. But yeah, um, yeah, he's had a rough few weeks. Sam's gonna get plenty more times to uh, get experience and sh- improve himself. He's likely Michael Annette's replacement next year, it looks like. Oh, I'm net for the Hall no, of Fame. <laughs> no. Now, they did those guys that we talked about, Gregson and, and Meyer, did not too good, but I, I want to shout out three people that did really good Jordan Anderson in fifth. Yes. Eric, your pick, the one you literally was laughing about because of the absurdity of it, turned out to be the highest one of any of but, us. I figured he'd have a good run. I, I didn't expect him to push the eventual race winner past Joe Gibbs Racing, but, but he did. So, But, but also, we know, on, honestly, his Xfinity program is leaps and bounds better than the Truck Series program. I know it's definitely so a little better. That's so crazy to me. Anyway, Joe Graff Jr. Top ten. He finished tenth. Uh, is that his first career top ten? 
I don't know, but Joe Graff oh, Jr. Hey, usually doesn't finish good, in the top good for 10. you. We were talking to his dad, actually. Me and Eric were at uh, Vegas. Yeah. So that's, and then that's cool. Blaine Perkins. Who beat Riley Hurts. Yep, yep. Blaine Perkins. Yep, he raced at the Bull Ring in uh, 2020. Um, won a uh, a few races in the Arca Series West. Didn't you I interview did. him? Yep. Yeah, I did. I did there interview him. So. I set you yeah. up on that one. And the Arca West <laughs> Series, excuse me. But it was great to see him up front. I was like, oh, oh. I was like, didn't, oh, Blaine is in this race. That's right. Didn't he beat Riley Herbst yeah, to win it? stage Danny he did that, yeah. he did yeah. yep he did I, mm-hmm. I didn't mean to throw herbst under the bus he's had a better few weeks and everything but i just thought yeah. it was funny it well, was funny because on the broadcast they literally said the, as they took the white flag or whatever herbst has never won a stage this season he's still looking for his first <laughs> and he stage still has him. And yep. Blaine perkins, perkins I, beats him to the line i saw oh. i saw people on twitter making the meme you just mm. lost to blaine perkins <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> Yeah, but keep an eye out for Blaine Perkins. We don't know what yeah, uh, he yeah. can do in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Tw- Twitter and, and just basically internet does not exist at Talladega. But you know what does exist at Talladega is uh, playoff shakeups. And we had a few this past weekend. So I'm going to read off these guys. Uh, second place, Just Nogar, plus 55. Daniel Hemrick, plus 41. AJ Allmendinger, plus 33. Justin Haley, plus 24. Brandon Jones, plus 21. Noah Gregson, still plus 18. And then sitting on the line, you got the Burtons. Harrison, plus eight over Jim. And then Myatt Snyder, minus 24 in 10th. Riley Herps, minus 32 in 11th. And Jeremy Clements taking up the rear, minus 48. Going Eric, into the Roval. Eric jinxed him. He jinxed Jeremy. That's what happened. You know, come to think of it, maybe, you know, out of the groove is not something that should be on a race car. You know, that's, <laughs> it's a little that's kind of no. a, a curse in, in itself. Yeah. But no, so, back to... And, okay. and also, Eric probably say some big money. <laughs> so, just, just, just kidding. Sorry, that was really. What 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 do we got for? I was, trying to, I, I was trying to I was, I was trying to make a Menards joke. Honestly, sorry. Oh, <laughs> what, what do we, <laughs> okay, what we got for the cutoff here, though? So, uh, I'm looking at it and I'm like, Noah Gregson's pretty good at the Roval. Yeah. And then, so I feel like he's good. I, how's Brandon Jones? That's the one that I. Uh, he's I hit or really, miss. I think. I, I think, think he's hit or like, miss. He's, like he's, he's run well there. He hasn't. I, I will say, you know, we'll talk about it a little later. There is rain in the forecast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that bodes well for Gregson. I, I no Riley Herbst. I know I just made a joke about him, but he has run well at road courses this year for the most part. Um, he needs a win pretty much to make it in. But and so I'm not going to pick him to win. I wouldn't bet on it. But he could, he'll be in the top five. I'll bet he'll have a shot. So I'm looking at this playoff grid right now too, and and I mean like um, the two obvious that I think will be out, um, Herbst and, and Clements. I think um, they'll uh, both be out. But looking at uh, sixth through tenth here, I mean it's very interesting. You know, it's very polarizing to me. I mean, you got Gregson right here; he's pretty good at the Roval. Brendan Jones is like hit or miss, and then Harrison Burton and Jeb Burton too. I feel like they. They run good, but I mean, on road courses, kind of meh. And then sitting but, right behind those two is uh, Myatt Snyder, who's I, he's all right on road I'll courses. I'll be real. Too. I'll oh. be real. I don't have faith in Myatt Snyder. I mean, I think he went like yeah. what, what, like an absurd amount of races outside of the top ten. I want to I, I want to yeah. talk about Myatt Snyder, and this is a car. It RCR didn't have a full time driver last year in the Xfinity series. But two years ago, this car was the class of the field with Tyler yeah. Reddick. And Mike Snyder, to start the season off, hey, got to win at Homestead. Great job. But is it me, or has he fell off a lot as the year has progressed? Oh, no, he's fallen yeah. off, I'd say. Yeah, that's fair to say. That's why and I'm, I, and I'm, I like, I'm just like, what happened? What happened yeah. to you? That's fair to say. Well, that Homestead win was a, a you know, what kind of win, if you <laughs> ask me. So, I mean. <laughs> I'll be real. Uh, I, think, I think the top eight we have now, barring some kind of crazy – shenanigans i think that's the top eight we're getting okay all right so yeah uh, likely i mean yeah. like but again it is gonna perhaps rain it, it might perhaps rain at the roval so it could you know sprinkle. bring some chaotic yeah good sprinkle so. it, it, yeah it, it could sprinkle and a, a jalmanager could just win it again <laughs> so could make it more chaotic but no. uh i don't i don't expect any upsets though we'll see now the one race that didn't have any sprinkles or anything in the way this past weekend was the truck race oh, oh no there was something in the way and it was called a john hunter Nemechek. he was in the way 
<laughs> well, not yeah, in the race itself. <laughs> bulldozing everybody. That was our demolition derby. I just want to say that, get that right out of the way right now. And uh, they race so clean the first two stages. And it's the truck series, though. No, nope, it's a truck series. Nothing, not, nothing time, good time lasts again. forever. But, well, it, it, it all went downhill after Jennifer Joe Cobb, I think. So. Yeah, yeah. I want to. Yeah, yeah, what, what, what the hell was that? What was Joe Cobb so, doing not, there? Not to get ahead of the, the not ahead of us here, but I think Bob Pockers tweeted that somebody, the crew chief on like the O2 or one of the trucks got suspended and i he, saw reports is is was that jennifer joe cobb's husband i don't know like I, or that I, he got in a fight with jennifer joe cobb's someone was, was associated with jennifer joe cobb like I, that that's what i heard report i was saw a yeah i heard that too like and so just, I, this, yeah, this fight, I'll, I'll just say this now there was audible laughter in the grandstands watching the replay <laughs> Mm-hmm. Like I you see were. her truck fly in, and you just hear people being like, "What the heck are they doing?" Harry, I'm dropping the hammer. And freaking <laughs> oh, poor I Parker like, Clayton. I like, too. I like Spencer put in the chat. Leroy Jenkins. That's what it was. That's what it was. Jen, and and this was the Jen this Joe, was the same. Jen Joe was just gonna send it. This was the same yeah, driver that yeah. some of the fan base that were mad when uh, NASCAR was like, no, you are not running. The I was mad because they didn't at first give a good reason. <laughs> yeah, they How didn't give a good reason, but now we, we have a reason. We have a reason. And uh, Parker but, Kligman went off on Twitter I, afterwards, too. Right? Does, and rightfully so. Does this compare to Ke- what Kevin LePage did years ago, though? No, no, no. I, no, I don't think so. No, no, no that's, way. That's, I don't think anything will top that. I don't that's think. a whole other level of stupid. Yeah. We know. Maybe, maybe she legitimately had some sort of brake failure you know it's how they you may not you wouldn't know until you had to use them because you don't use I, them you know? I, I feel she like was she way did, far she would back, have tweeted bro. it every I, I feel like if she does did, she have she a twitter tweeted. yeah she tweets at yeah, people yeah. whenever anyone gets on her about stuff yeah. so like and she sometimes blocks people too i'm not blocked but i saw uh, uh, never mind then, i no, literally yeah, poked yeah, she, a bear by tagging mistaken. her when i when i tweeted what the f is jen joe cop like Oh, yeah, what's because I'll, I'll be real. Like that's like one of the few moments that I had some like Twitter reception, and I'm just like, yeah, uh, uh, screw it. Why like, not? I, if she would have slowed down, she was like so far back, she would have made it through, wouldn't she? She, she, she made it through even 20. going really fast until yeah. you know she slid into Kligerman. But you know, <laughs> well, I know who made it through it all and caused some of it was Tate Fogelman. And uh, <laughs> yeah, Tate Fogelman. I had never heard this name. But Tate Fogel, oh, all of a sudden a winner. I hadn't heard of I've him. I've always until noticed then. his name because I'm like, that's such an odd name. But um, Tate. shout out, shout out to their photographer James. You guys know him. He's mm-hmm. the photographer for for Young's Motorsports. Yeah. First time he got to shoot in a uh, a NASCAR victory lane, so that was cool. So yeah, I'm happy for him. And second time in the last three Talladega fall truck races that Young's Motorsports has won. Uh, <laughs> they won in 2019 oh, with yeah. Vincent Ford. And they now did. this year with oh, Tate Fogelman. So, hey, I mean, wow, make it a holiday. This should be an annual. But uh, the post-race interview, like Tate Fogelman was just like so chill about it. I was like, yeah, just won. And this is what we did. I don't know. It just yeah, gave yeah. off that type I mean, of vibe again. You know? Well, one, they didn't show it on TV. You had to go find it on YouTube and Twitter and stuff afterwards. Yeah. But two, you know, in fairness, he did have to go through the ambulance. He did yeah. had a few minutes to think about it. And he probably felt bad because he did kind of, at least in my opinion, he kind of KO'd John Hunter Nemechek. He, there coming he, to the line. He, not kind of. I think he kind of came down a little bit. Nemechek yeah. came down a little, but Fogelman just <laughs> was shot the whole lane <laughs> off the yellow line. I, hey, he wanted to get him. that first win. Wanted to get that first win. Might never I was trying to side draft. Him, I was just so. trying to side draft. I was just It was Netco, bro. It was Netco, bro. I was trying to. Netcode, I bro. draft the driver's seat. It was netcode. It was eye racing netcode at its finest. I like I'll be, okay, so I I, I don't want to be the stickler on this one, but I was actually not happy with the finish because of all that. Like it was a little much, yeah. It was yeah. it was just it was too much. And then that that hit he took. I took a video and you can kind of see it in there. I I, I hope the broadcaster that hit he took it like, was big. It it was extremely big. And and I'm just I, I watched that and I'm like, th- this is why dry. Like, there needs to be some kind of reminder without a driver getting hurt that hey, you can get hurt in this. Like Noah Gregson went through the damn wall. Like this, this but is, was fine, this, but he walked uh, away. I, I know, know. It's, it's, it's it's a sticky situation. It's, it's messed up. I know. Well, and and okay, I want to bring this up right now. I don't know what the hell the president of Talladega Super Speedway was thinking. <laughs> so that's how <laughs> dude. Every truck. No, he he. Okay, yeah. So everyone's like, oh, we said it in an interview. 
So apparently they didn't show it on TV. No, he came out with a podium and microphone in front of the crowd and yelled it to us that this is what the trucks need to look like. And these idiots around me started cheering for it. <laughs> I, want every, I want every truck here crash it on a tow truck leaving it's, here. No, no. It's, it's, not, it's getting towed it's behind not. him on the wrecker. And he said, that's what we need every winning truck to look like at Talladega. And these idiots freaking cheered about that i'm, I'm like, not gonna hold it over the drunk fans in the crowd but i am gonna hold it over the president yeah. of Talladega. dumbass why are you saying that, like, but that what, but, what, no, what i'm saying is like we know they're bad. drunk idiots so why would you encourage this what he <laughs> what he should have said if the drunk idiots are the ones cheering that probably means what you're saying is wrong yeah. <laughs> how, how he how he should have worded it not that every truck not that every race winning truck should look like that but that the driver should have that much will and want to win the race that they would go through that effort to win it sure i can understand that that i can get yeah we already have a problem with these young drivers and you know racing etiquette and you know all that stuff and then all of a sudden one of your track presidents for talladega is super speedway by the way it's not not uh, excuse me it's not just some uh random uh track in the uh, middle of nowhere here so i mean (laughs) if he says something i mean that that holds a lot of weight there too i'll be real i i this felt like an Eddie Gossage moment. Yeah, yeah big, I, that's what it Gossage sounded like vibes. to me. It, yeah. did. it gave me Gossage like vibes. And, uh, and, and the, the it's biggest, not a real race unless the, they're all wrecked. The biggest, what the biggest problem is like Eddie Gossage can have the defense that, hey, they're with SMI, they're a private company. No, this is a track that ISA is owned by NASCAR. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, yeah. it's one thing if it's, like, some random track president at, at, like, a short track, but, like, this is, like, one of the marquee tracks on the schedule, and he's saying that, like, every truck needs to be wrecked, it should look like that, and all, like, that's bad. And, and I'd cut him some slack if it was, like, the Martinsville track president, where yes. every car usually looks a little dinged up at the end of but that race. This is race. Talladega. a little more be- getting... Yeah, you, you can't, can't be, be encouraging massive yeah, crashes like, at Talladega. That's just careless. I, I, that, that, MRN, MRN was going on during the truck race talking about the fact they're like, oh, they're averaging laps at 192 miles an hour. It's fast for these trucks. And I'm just like, and then you got this dude coming out. Every one of them needs to crash at 50 G's into the wall. Kill him. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, oh, was no. human not enough? I guess no, apparently that's not. What, that's what I that's asked. The, me, the, the only... <sighs> crash winning race that i think should honestly be how i would expect the race to end like that was the one at bristol with aj yep. i would expect yeah. the race to end at bristol like that a, a, we a, can a, celebrate a, that one because it's so rare we don't yeah. see well now now we've seen it twice in the last month but before then we don't <laughs> see the winner get into the ambulance after the race and be cheering the wave into the crowd but yeah if it starts to happen every couple of weeks then we got a problem i, I see in the chat tank slapper in there I, i'm just thinking about this in the bender voice do a flip Dude, that's kind of what I was thinking. I was thinking <laughs> I feel like that's a track president being like, hold on, I didn't see it. All right, do a flip. <laughs> no, do it again. Uh, I wasn't looking. <laughs> but I will say that like I don't want to be too negative. There were some really cool people who finished in, in different spots up front. Now I, I want like I love I love shouting people out after Talladega races, man. It's so fun because you just there's these names that you just don't usually talk about. Hey, wait, Tyler wait, Hill finished second. <laughs> yes. That's what's up. Corey Roper finished sixth, Danny Bone in eighth, and my man, yeah, no I was about to say, top fifteen, not, not top fifteen, top seventeen finish. Yes, he hey. finished seventeenth. Norm, I mean, he 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 kept it up. He was two laps down. So much of the race, he was in thirtieth. He just he kept chugging. He had a sponsor this week. He's got hard. He man. got a top twenty based on attrition. That's hard. Yeah. That's heart right there. <laughs> Let's go. That's my driver. Hey. Let's go, Norm. That's my driver. I see. Uh, <laughs> I see Sloppy Joe in the chat, and he said. 20, I saw it. 2012 Talladega Fall Race. How much bigger does he want these wrecks to be? Because that was literally the whole field, and there was a flip. Uh, I would love wow. to hear. Tony Wasn't good enough because Matt Kenseth was <laughs> his car was still clean at the end of that race. So well, no, that was a bad. That was bad. I'll tell you what. What's crazy about this? You know, we're five weeks out with with the Cup and Xfinity schedules, but like this was this this was the third to last race of the year for trucks. So, oh yeah, wow. because they're not going to race for another two weeks. Actually, yeah. So you're yeah. right, or three so, weeks. Yeah, it's so like, done. Look, like I'll, I'll read through the playoffs really quick. John Hunter plus thirty six, Ben Rhodes plus thirty five, Crafton plus ten, Creed is plus Creed. five, Freeze and minus five, Chandler Smith minus thirty four, Carson Hosevar minus thirty seven. Zane Smith minus forty. I like how Carson Hosevar tweeted out after this race, like "You're going after <laughs> me, but what about this?" Like, <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. Thing. Oh my god. That's gosh. not. Oh man. That's Guys, but, I, 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 I realized Crafton survived. He survived. No wins. Guys, he's gonna do it. <laughs> 
Oh, he's, he's going to do it again. Yeah. He's going to do it again. He's going to expose the system again. Dude, if he wins another championship without winning a race, oh, my God. That's uh, another I video. I <laughs> want it to happen. I, I want it to anyway, say it, yeah. Looking, at, looking it. at the cutoff line right now, who we got? I mean, if uh, it really, it's a race between Kraft and Kareem Friesen, unless uh, Smith, Josevar Smith. I yeah, think, I mean, I'm uh, looking wins. at it right now. I mean, like six hey, or eight, I'm pretty much eliminating, honestly. I like Josevar is a great dark horse. Can we say dark? He's a playoff driver, but I'd say Josevar mm-hmm. is a good dark horse to win. At He's a good dark horse, yeah. Good short track racer. Win, but but no, nah, yeah. I wouldn't pick. I think Friesen, they've been so consistent in these playoffs. I think they'll go to Martinsville and run top five and have a yeah. great. They'll put pressure on. I think Creed's going to be tough. I think Crafton plus 10 is the one in the most danger. But mm-hmm. man, I don't know. Uh, Friesen's dirt track experience will play good for Martinsville, I think. Yeah, and not Friesen- to mention Chandler Smith just wanted a short track mm-hmm. to clinch a spot, so he could do it again. I mean, I- Friesen, he's had a very quiet season too. So to have him just five points he's- outside of the championship four, I mean, props to him for that. Seemed to have run better as the seasons went on, where it feels like Creed either is up front leading the whole time or running 15th. Wait, hold on. I just realized something. So Crafton doesn't have a win, Friesen doesn't have a win either, right? No. I don't think so, no. no. So potentially two of the four championship four drivers and trucks could have zero wins. Well, it's not- if if Friesen's in that race, he's won at Phoenix before. He would be yeah. who I'd watch he'd for. Be a, so. He'd be a, a true contender, yeah, definitely. But just the fact, I mean, you gotta, winning means so much now in, in this era, right? But then, you know, I, you'll have moments like that. I do think just because it does seem like – it seems like Crafton kind of runs like that 8th to 15th, and then he'll – you know, get a good finish at the end. Um, But at at a place like Martinsville or not Martinsville, um, is it Martin? I I can't remember. It's Martinsville Martinsville and then Phoenix. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. (laughs) Why they have so many? I'm sick of the stupid (laughs) breaks. Anyway, anyway, I feel like in a place like Martinsville, like you're not safe there. You're you're just not like once the leader catches the end of the conveyor belt, nobody is safe at Martinsville. How many times have we seen before where a top 10 car get or, car truck whatever gets taken out so i don't know who i give the edge to here i feel like creed will be the one who actually goes up and leads at, at oh Martin. yeah creed uh, he has been arguably the best truck all season and you know the fact that now he has to fight just to stay in i mean it just shows how crazy this playoff system no, is. john well, Nemechek I mean, has been the best truck all, yeah. season. all right all right yeah. well, he's been second best yeah. Yeah. creed's been yeah, set, he's been good that. in these yeah. playoffs creed's he's, been yeah. yeah he's been good yeah. in the playoffs but but John Hunter has to be the favorite. Yeah, the overall. Well, yeah, my bad. Hey, I, no, I do actually got to say Ben Rhodes. He won the first two races of the year. He's he's done good. There's, there's, there's no, there's, I'm not surprised he's where he's at too. So, but I mean, yeah. we felt like I can't pick a single race that at least one of us hasn't picked. John Hunter Nemechek. I think I all of us have yeah. picked him at least once. Yeah. No, I'm, yeah, it's every single yeah. week. So yeah. I, I I feel like he's good. I feel like Ben Rhodes should be good. You know. I feel like the three at the bottom. If, if I had to pick anyone to fall out, it'd be Crafton, and then obviously Friesen would be the one who would jump up. Yeah. So I think Creed would be fine, though. I mean, barring the unforced, you know, any I think he'll unfortunate circumstances. Yeah. 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 So that's oh, okay. oh, almost knocked over the UFO. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the close well, one there. Hey. Anyway. On that note, uh, we just got a letter. It's the mailbag time, guys. Oh, I thought this was Blue's Clues for a second here, bro. <laughs> we just got an email. We just yes. got an email. An email. Right. Yep. The famous NASCAR Weekly Podcast fan bag question. Mailbag. Mailbag. Or mailbag question. Dang, I don't know, why I, I don't know why I said fan bag. Right. So I've only, I've only been speak. off for one week, and I can't say the thing. Go ahead, Daniel. Fan the bag. mailbag question this week comes to us from Marshall. Marshall. Says, Hi, Marshall. Hi, Marshall. Hey. That's, Jerry, you're that. not going to say hi to Marshall? I'm the one who read the damn email. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Marshall. hi to Marshall. I read your email. Thank you. Uh, Sorry, Marshall. Some of us aren't aren't as considerate as others. We apparently. are Marshall. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. Wonder who it's from. Marshall. Okay. Hey, guys. I'm a huge fan of y'all and love watching y'all's podcast every week. So here is the mailbag question. What was the best and worst race to be at in person for you guys? I'll, I'll start off here, and I can I can always say the worst race to be at in person was 2018 Fall Talladega because that was just weird. It made no sense what was happening, and it did not feel like Talladega while I was there. The, the beginning, like pre-race stuff, I actually had fun, but the race itself was just not a Talladega race. It felt weird, and then four Stuart Haas cars were just dominating everybody, and then it not even the best one all day won the race. It was just weird. 
the best race to be at in person. And I always said, mainly because of just what it meant to our friend group and all of our other friends, the 2019 night race at Bristol was just mm-hmm. was just so much fun. That was a great uh, weekend. And the fact that we almost saw the unthinkable with the Benedetto winning, everything about that race, I still say, was a great race to be at. And then, okay, I got to tie that one for personal reasons, 2017 night race at Bristol where I got engaged. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I was waiting for Did that. Did Claudia thing. just walk in the room or something? Yeah, I was about like, to say. Okay. <laughs> per, per, BB per, gun at you. <laughs> personal reasons, getting engaged was the best moment for me to race, but the overall best race weekend, best race itself, 19 night race. And she would agree with that, I would say. Yeah, I'd agree uh, with that, too. Only twice if you're one. in danger, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll okay. say for me, my favorite one has to be I'm gonna be I'm gonna be very selfish on this one. My favorite one was seeing Junior win in person in twenty twelve. Yeah, yeah. Plus got to spend it with my mom. That was pretty cool. Uh worst one at sorry, Dad, this is one that you were at. Oh. Though there are some really good ones that went to my dad with uh twenty twenty Kansas. I'm sorry. Oh so <laughs> yeah. cold. The racing was awful, and Joey Logano ended up winning. Like that's triple whammy right there. Like triple whammy, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so I, I got to say that one. I'll say the best one, obviously, 2019 Bristol. I mean, I feel like that started the era we're currently in on on uh, YouTube at the moment. So, yeah, I'd say that. Um, um, Bristol 2019, just meeting everybody for the first time. It was awesome, you know, just getting to make new connects and stuff like that. And we haven't looked back ever since, in my opinion. So. And, we, and we found Sloppy's wallet. Yes, and I found my wallet. <laughs> yeah, my wallet. It was good. stuck. It was stuck in the um in the uh, in the wall for like the truck race and the Xfinity race, and then he found it before the Cup race. So that was funny. Wait, but what are wait, the odds? were y'all? I know I filmed it. Was y'all even around there, or was it just me? Who was no, no, no. I think it was you. It was just you, Sloppy, and I think Jake was there. We yeah. I think Darren. Yeah. I think Darren and I went back to the house for some for a little bit to get some stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And now by far the worst I've been to though. And look, uh, I love the Daytona 500. I'm sorry, but this year, you know, the this year's Daytona 500, the 2021 Daytona 500. I mean. At first, it was looking promising, but then we had the big wait, one on lap 13. Darren, Darren, wait. What? We were both at Las Vegas a couple weeks ago. Are you kidding Bro, me? Bro, that was personal. That was a personal thing for me, man. That was my home track. I'm not about to do them like that. No, no, no. So the 2021 500, I mean, it was looking promising at first, but then you had the big one, so a lot of contenders got taken out. And then we had a freaking six to seven hour rain delay. That sucked. And oh, then yeah. once the race got back going, we were up in the freaking, what do you call those seats? The nosebleed seats or whatever? Oh, the, or, yeah, yeah. Or the, nose, yeah. No, the You're in the blimp, the Goodyear blimp. Uh, yeah, we, we, we were basically fall, ben. we were basically sitting right by the uh, Goodyear blimp, uh, pretty much, and then they were just training it for um, most of the race and stuff, and it was freaking cold. And then the race didn't end until like what one or two in the morning. So. Yeah, it was it was like one in the morning. My, my my girlfriend still yeah. hates Christopher Bell because of that race. <laughs> yeah, so she, yeah. she says he ruined her five hundred. Yeah, so the twenty twenty one five hundred, the worst race I've been to. But um, an honorable mention though for that is. Like uh, what uh, Eric pointed out, the uh, 2021 Vegas race. Yeah, that one was. If I didn't, I didn't, if I didn't get media access for that, that would be up there. Yeah. Yeah, for me, uh, 2007 Brickyard 400. I barely remember anything about it, um, but I remember seats were bad, hard to see. I mean, I was right there on the front stretch, but it was crowded. I mean, you know, in fairness, it was crowded. There were 200,000 people there, but you couldn't see anything. And Tony Stewart won, and I was in a big Tony Stewart uh, dislike phase. Um, so I was, I, I hated that one. Uh, best race either 19 Bristol night or um, honestly Southern 500 a few weeks ago. Just I, I was there by myself. I was just chilling in the grandstands on my own, so uh, didn't have the camaraderie that I've had at other races. But just actually sitting in the stands watching the race itself was I, I got a newfound appreciation for Darlington Raceway and for that that race in particular. So that was up there. But Matt Kenseth winning at Slinger in 2020 or 2019 was my favorite experience at a racetrack by far. Yep. Just an aside, I find it kind of. I find it kind of interesting. Eric and I went to back-to-back races as each other in 2007. I went to Chicagoland, and then two weeks later, you went to Indy. Wow. I, oh, I yeah, would rather go to Chicagoland. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Tony Stewart won that one, too. Oh, yeah. shit. Never mind. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Junior was a contender, from. though. I remember that race. Until he was a contender. Yep. Yeah. But, but thank you, Marshall, for, for your question. If you want your question to be heard on any of the last five podcasts coming up this year, leave your question at weekly podcast guest at gmail.com. That is all lowercase weekly podcast guest at gmail.com. Don't ask to be on because I'm not going to read it. Uh, we will but, block you. 
<laughs> what else we got? What else Nothing. we got on the stop? <laughs> so what else? What else we got to go? We love the mailbag questions. Keep sending those in. Uh, Mod, thank you, Marshall. Yes, thank, thank you, you, Marshall. <laughs> uh, Mod, be sure to thank you, Marshall. Be sure to put in that uh, email address. And the the mailbag question is always brought to you by our friends over at Lionel Racing, the exclusive NASCAR diecast provider <laughs> of NASCAR. I am going full Talladega mode here. Uh, you really I, are. I just dropped a pace here. Wow. But this is Ricky Stenhouse Jr.'s first win uh, complete with a custom diecast display that was made by a guy named Craig Dalton. He no longer makes these, but I'm glad I have a few of these in my personal collection. What a great way to show off Ricky Stenhouse Jr.'s first win at Talladega from 2017. And I tried to watch this right in my classic race watch long series, but oh, NASCAR's copyright laws weren't having that one. So we oh, they did not. Laws. Oh man, it is what it is. But hey, what else do you guys have? Because I, I legit can't say anything past this thing. So I don't know what you guys. Have. I I got Dale Earnhardt Wrangler car. Uh, I figured a Dale Earnhardt car would be good for post Talladega, uh, mm-hmm. and I always like how this one looks. So there we go. Yeah, I got the JD McDuffie here. Shout out to the one and only Brock Beer. Did a video on him, and I did a video on uh, McDuffie a couple of years ago too. Six hundred and fifty-three races without a win, I believe, the most in NASCAR history. But he was one of the true underdogs. So if he ever gets a uh, a uh, Hall of Fame nod, I would not be surprised by it. So JD McDuffie. And I completely forgot to grab one, but I always have a Matt Kenseth diecast within arm's reach of me. So I luckily had a Matt Kenseth Phoenix final win car sitting here i've probably shown this one a dozen times before but it was the only thing at my desk so always beauty all, all i'm thinking now eric is the meme of sheen this is the seventh week in a row you <laughs> <laughs> ultra lord <laughs> ultra lord but yeah. thank you again to Lionel racing hey order your favorite nascar <laughs> diecast at lionelracing.com and they will ship them out to you when they are ready to produce. There's lots of great options that are available, including I've seen they're actually going to be making that A.J. Allmendinger win from Bristol a few weeks mm-hmm. back. And get that Bubba win scheme get, pretty soon. Go right? ahead and pre-order your Bubba yeah. cars. It's, it's pre-order that. Made. Yeah, that's going to be and that's going to sell like hotcakes. I think cakes. I saw they're planning to do the Brandon Brown one too. Nice. Rainwater, nice. rainwater not included on the Bubba one, but yeah, you can just, you can dump your go, your go, soda on it or something. Go to the sink and there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So re- real quick, I want somebody to get their phone out, and I want to see how quick I can get through this next uh, next part. The lightning uh, round. I, I got you. Hey. I got you. Hey. I got you. Hey. Who's, who's getting struck by lightning? Hey. It's the lightning round on the NASCAR Weekly Podcast. Jared, what do we have on tap tonight? We ready? Right. Yeah. And timer started. Thanks, Marshall. No, sorry. <laughs> just- Ricky Stenhouse Jr. will stand a number 47 car in 2022, according to Bob. Uh, NBC Universal has struck a deal with YouTube TV so that NBC sports pro- programming, including NASCAR, will not be blacked out on the service. Teresa Earnhardt has given the car that won the 2001 Pepsi 400, as well as three of the first, well, the first three of the four in a row at Talladega that Jr. won. She's given it to the International Motorsports Hall of Fame in Talladega, according to NASCAR Man. Pretty cool. Uh, Grant Enfinger will race full time at GMS in 2022 and 2023. Ty Dillon is a current front runner for GMS's Cup ride. Austin Hill is going to be leaving Hattori at the end of this year, though. Uh, and then Gosh. Chris Busher and Ryan Newman will switch crew chiefs uh, and road crews from Charlotte onwards. Denny Hamlin has said that the charter and crew chief Kurt Busch are set for 2311. We found that out more today. Jordan Bianchi reported that. The Phoenix finale is officially sold out on all accounts. Jimmy Johnson took part in his first Indy 500 rookie test today, and from what it sounded like, he did pretty good. Uh, Ford has shown interest in backing Marco Andretti in a select amount of Xfinity races for Stuart Haas Racing in 2022. There will be a Cup next-gen test at the Roval October 12th with almost all teams testing, but the notable exception being front row, 20 cars slash drivers are going to be there. Michael Annette will retire from full-time driving at the conclusion of this year. Unfortunately, his career had to end this way. And then this got reported today by Bob Pachris. The current engine type that we have in 2021 will be used in 2022 and more than likely 23. Any changes that would happen would be 24 at the earliest, probably later, uh, which means based on the question that was asked, the 550 testing is with the current 550 engine package. Uh, and then last thing, I didn't put it on here. Happy birthday, Dale Jr. this Sunday. 
Oh, yeah, it is. He's my, he's my favorite driver. I'm going to say it. Happy birthday, bro. Happy birthday. And Darian, do your thing. Uh, <laughs> Eric, maybe you uh, <laughs> that was the lightning round of the last car weekly podcast and now back to the show Eric. i didn't make you laugh it was the way D- <laughs> jerry just went oh yeah by the way, D- darian do your thing uh <laughs> how'd i do how'd i do and uh, how'd i do it and uh, by the way jared you clocked in about right at two minutes yeah, hey, that's, a speed whoa. Run. that's a speed run right there a couple, like a couple things i want to mention. i feel bad for michael mcdowell or not michael mcdowell michael annette that he's kind of going out this way you know i've you know, it's especially, you know, a week after his car is won by another driver, you know, so it's just kind of kind of sad, but you know, it is but, what it is. But, I think but also when he, also when he won that one, it almost made it seem like, okay, this probably is the last of him. Right. It yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's absolutely fair. But, but, it, um, but it does sound like he does want to come in in a part-time basis. Heck, heck maybe he's a great candidate to drive for beard in the, the cup series part-time. He's got funding, so he could definitely make a, a Daytona 500 attempt if he wanted to. He could to. be like the next Brendan Gone, just popping up yeah, the super speedway yeah. races. Yeah, and I wouldn't surprise Occasionally flipping while running first. <laughs> <laughs> or, he well, might just, yeah. or he might just mess around and win the whole thing. I don't know. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's also possible. Now, I know da- uh, Danny wants to get to Super Chats. We've run a little long with this first big yeah. segment of the show. But first, uh, this episode is also sponsored by Forney Industries. Forney offers a full line of welding and plasma cutting machines, metalworking accessories, and much, much more. Great for do-it-yourselfers or if you're a professional metal metal worker, great for you as well. Forney has everything you need for your next project. I found out recently, you know, they have a deal with Jordan Anderson Racing as well. And they've actually oh. uh, supported them a lot at the shop this year, given them a lot of the equipment uh, parts oh, wow. and pieces and things that they work with uh, in the shop so jordan anderson finishing 11th in trucks fifth in the xfinity race this weekend you know has forney at least a little bit to thank for helping get them there uh, but you can shop for forney's top of the line all of forney's top of the line products at forneyind.com forney ind.com or at an authorized forney dealer near you but that's gonna do it all right. Right. We appreciate our friends over at Forney Industries. Now let's get into some of these super chats because we are funded also by viewers like you here on Denny B Talks and the NASCAR Weekly Podcast. Okay, I'm gonna start Thank the you. timer here at <laughs> I'm gonna start the timer <laughs> here at five minutes and, and now. go. All right, and we start off early by a very generous twenty dollars coming in from Vote Kyle three thousand. Appreciate that. Dodgers or Cardinals tonight? Who's winning the World Series? I know who's who. Eric's got. Personally, I can't say I'm much of a follower of Major League Baseball, but Eric, you kind of are, so let me get your take on this. Uh, Astros are, you know, I think they're, they have, I mean, I'm obviously I'm pulling for them to win the World Series this year and uh, prove that 2017 was not a fluke. Uh, <laughs> four straight ALCS has already proved that 2017 was not a fluke, but still another championship wouldn't hurt. Uh, tonight, I, the game's probably going on right now, so I have no idea who's leading, but going in, I would probably pick the Dodgers, but I'm rooting for, I'm rooting for the Cardinals. Are the Mariners in the playoff? No, they missed it by like a oh, game or two. Oh, dang. Yeah. We believe still. We believe. Oh, Darren just muted himself. Okay. Uh, Confirmation 07. Appreciate the $10. Considering that this is the last super speedway race of the Gen 6 era and the 23 car can't really be used for any other race, will it go on display in the NASCAR Hall of Fame sometime down the road? I could easily see that, honestly. I would not be surprised if that ends up in, in some of the museums because, yes, they don't need that car anymore. For any reason. Possible. So, yeah, I can see that. Antar Doss coming in for very nice 9 and I appreciate that. And this question for Darian. Hey, Darian, glad you're back. I came back from boot camp last week, and when I oh. saw what I missed in F1 in the last two months, all I could say was WTF. Dega was fun, and Roval is going to be crazy. Oh, yeah, definitely for sure. Yeah, F1, it's, uh, it's exciting this year, that's for sure. And uh, good luck in boot camp. Or whatever you're doing. <laughs> I think he like, finished it. He was the oh, guy who said, it. Nice. I think yeah. he said last week when you were here, Darren, that he's now like officially a sailor or something. And, I forget and, exactly. Oh, what? That's a, that's a name I remember. We hadn't seen him in a while, so it is good to hear yeah. from that's you. That's awesome. And uh, glad things are going pretty good for you. Yeah, NAS- congrats, man. NASCAR fan 6056, appreciate the 699 Canadian dollars. Hello from Canada. Question for you guys. Do you think Cole Custer still deserves his seat in the 41? What do you think the future holds for him? Uh... He needs to step it up because it, it is it is not looking like it's going good for him this year, especially compared to last look, season. Look, I mean, you can make the argument, yeah, he doesn't deserve to be there, but I mean, he has you know family ties to that seat to an extent, so he'll be but, in yeah. that seat for a while. But, exactly. Who who are they going to put in there instead? Right. Right. Now? Who there do they there have? is no one in the pipeline Matt right Benedetto. now. Oh. Riley Hurst. 
uh, Herbst Actually, has funding. That might be, that yeah, might be. yeah, Herbst has some funding. But hey, Cole Custer, Cole Custer, give him a year. win a race. Give him another year. I think I think you should give him another year. If he shows noticeable improvement next year, roll with him. But if Chase Briscoe like blows him out the water next year, then yeah, <laughs> yeah then then. Well, I was looking at like the points, like the traditional points this year. Briscoe, I believe, is second on the team. I mean, Harvick's obviously mm-hmm. up here, and then it's like Briscoe, Almarola, Custer. So like, give Briscoe the real rookie some credit. He's been better than expected. Or I don't know about better than expected, but he's at least been okay this year. I mean, Briscoe has showed more of a chance to win this year, and I think Custer has it going back to Indianapolis. So, all right, Flying Gator, appreciate the four ninety nine, and this is actually a fair point right here. New people will watch this next race since Bubble One, and then they will see him at the Roval, possibly in thirtieth place. <laughs> Terrible timing. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's not possible. he's not wrong. Yeah, he's not wrong. There. He's not Could wrong happen. at all. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> they're gonna be like, oh, well, he won. He's gonna do great again, right? What what's no, going no, on? Doesn't doesn't work that way. <laughs> Sorry, it doesn't work that way. Double zero music. Will any of y'all be at the Roval? I'll be there. Appreciate the two dollars. No. no, none of us will be at the Roval. Uh, Andrew Meyer, appreciate the five dollars. Bubba is the sixteenth different winner this season. Who would have guessed that he, McDowell, and the Dinger would have gotten wins this year? 2021 is crazy. That is crazy. It's well, crazy. why you watch the race. That's why you watch yeah. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Crazy thing is, if Almondinger wins on uh, Sunday, it'd be the first one to, to like run half the races and win more than once since yeah. I think Tim Richmond. Yeah. Be like, oh, oh late, yeah. Be like In David Pearson, who had like a crazy winning percentage and, you know, won mm-hmm. over 100 races or whatever. But, you know, I don't know that he, he ran like only two or three full seasons ever, right? Mm-hmm. Well, so, he wasn't allowed in a lot of states a lot of the time. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, <laughs> forgot about that story. <laughs> yeah, Did you do a video yeah. on that, Jarrett? No, but you're giving me ideas. <laughs> All right. Andrew Meyer, appreciate the $5. Oh, uh, wait, no. That was just right one. My bad. Vote Kyle 3000. Appreciate the extra $4.99. Rain chance at the Roval for Saturday at least, so eh, we'll just yeah. see what we saw last year probably. Mm-hmm. Johnny G, appreciate the four ninety nine going to the race at Texas. Haven't seen a race live since New Hampshire twenty ten. I need to go to Pocono next so I can say I've been to all the tracks no one likes. I was about to say I was like he's picking some doozies to go to, but uh, I, I hope Texas puts on a good show for you. It's a decent venue. Check out the Bucky's across the street. <laughs> and I'm going to read one more because I feel like uh, we, we spent a little bit more time in that. Uh, just gonna, Okay, we'll just say, appreciate one of the newest Danny B. Superfans member of the channel, our good friend Hot Piss. Welcome to the Danny B. Superfans Hot Piss. And never, wet and warm. never gets old. <laughs> what did you say? Wet and warm? Who's, who's, the, next, who's the next guest? Golden showers? Or what? Like, what's <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, okay. Whoa. But hey, we'll get back to the rest of the Super Chats a little bit later. Appreciate Thanks, Marshall. It. Yeah. <laughs> is that, right wait, there, hold on. Is that is right that R. Kelly's burner yeah, account right there? Or right there R. Kelly. Is that R. Kelly's uh, uh, Okay, Darian, let's step it down a little. <laughs> yeah. All right. We don't want to make it a shower. <laughs> anyway, speaking of showers, there is a chance of rain at the Robo this weekend. Let's talk Good about segue. the Robo. Ooh, uh, man. That was an awesome segue, Dan. Yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> well, what 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 we got on here? And maybe uh. Well, yeah, Dar- Danny, what do we got? Darian, what are our odds? Get, get, get all those. I thought it was uh, worth a standing yes. ovation. Oh, yeah. Personally. Let me let me pull up the NASCAR well, betting odds. For well, that. Yeah, while, while you're doing <laughs> that, pull it up. Danny's got the rest of it. All right. all right. You can catch the cup race this weekend on NBC, the actual NBC. You can also listen to it on the Performance Racing Network. The race starts at 2 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday. The Xfinity Series will also be live, also be live on the real NBC. Cool. Look at that. And you can listen to them on the Performance Racing Network. That'll be Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. The weather in Charlotte this weekend for Saturday, we're looking at a high of 74 degrees with a good chance of an afternoon thunderstorm, 55% chance of rain overall. Sunday, high of 76 degrees with a little bit of cloudy conditions and a 25% chance of rain. So, honestly, we're looking almost like we are mirroring the weekend from last year so far Mm -hmm. as the way the weather forecast is looking. Now... Darian, what kind of betting odds can you tell us? Because this is, except for Chase Elliott, this is a kind of hard I, to predict. No, according to Vegas Insider, they have Chase Elliott as like the definite favorite. I mean, he's entering this weekend at a uh, two hundred and twenty plus odds. Like I don't, I haven't seen a driver with those odds on this site so far yet. And then Kyle Larson second plus four fifty, MTJ plus seven hundred, KFB plus a thousand, and rounding out the top five, Denny Hamlin plus 1100 give me give, give me give me a long shot 
who, who, can win, shot, who, who can win me a lot of money that's realistic here? Let's see. That's real. Well, well, well definitely not Bubba. He's like 1,300 plus odds or whatever, 13,000, something like that. So he's definitely out of it. But, um, million. Our, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but uh, Ross Chastain and Chase Briscoe, they're uh, very interesting. They they entered this weekend at uh, 3,000 and 3,500 plus odds. And then just above them, AJ Allmendinger at 1,800. Ooh, really? So he, yeah, you got a chance to make some money here. So, yeah. AJ Allmendinger at 1800 plus odds. That's if he wins, that's charity, man. Yeah, like that's easy money, y'all. So, yeah, put All your right. money on him then. But, uh, yeah, those are some of the underdogs. All right, All we right. would the pick points here. I have continued to lead. Uh, I'm, I'm plus the, closer. I gained a yeah. few points this week. Eric's 35 back. Chat's, Chat's catching up. Yeah, Chat. Darian's minus 82. Gus minus 98. Danny is the first one of us officially eliminated hey, from. I'm just trying to be. I'm just, tr- I'm just trying to be like Alex Bowman at all at the same time. You know. Well, okay. I, he is eliminated. I, oh no! Yeah, I, oh, I, no. I, I did the math of all the races left, and you have to be within 121 points to mathematically win it. And Danny's oh. 125 back with five oh, weeks left. Just barely. <laughs> Did, Sorry, did, Danny. Did we, set up right. a, did we set up any kind of bet where the last place person has to drink hot sauce or something like that? No, no. We're, we're going to get you a trophy of a toilet that's broken. Oh, okay. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, but I, dang it, dang it. The chat got me, though. Dang, I, I take one week off and they got me. Mm. Did we get right. Noah's pick for the guest pick this week? Yes. Or did we totally forget? Oh, good, good, yeah, good. I got it. All right. Cool. Okay. So let's so, do it. With that being said, we've got an Xfinity race and a Cup Series race. And I will go ahead and say my Xfinity pick is going to be Ty Gibbs. <laughs> <laughs> your, go, all right, go, Eric. Go. No, I, I, I'm, let, make, I'm making Jarrett go first. I'll go first in Xfinity. You go first in Cup. Right. But no, I, I, that, Cup's worth more. Then screw it. I'll go first in Xfinity. Then Tyler okay, okay. Randall Gibbs. I'll go with him Randall. as well. He's All been right. struggling lately, but I think he'll be better this week. But what, what's struggling uh, for his standards? He's running like, like says seventh. You whoa, know? Whoa, whoa. He's, he's got like the best well, car let's in be the real. field. Yeah. Let's be real. Running seventh in Xfinity is kind of bad if you're top. Yeah, three. he's garbage. Yeah. My goodness, most overrated <laughs> driver since. Well, we just talked to him. <laughs> I'm choking. <laughs> I know, I know. What I know. do you got against Randall, man? Oh, man. I'm Tyler go Randall Gibbs. That's his full name. I'll go, with Wikipedia. AJ, I'll go with AJ Allmendinger, of course. Yeah, can't go wrong with that. So. Yeah, Let's he's won. Ahead. He's won both his races there. So Noah and I are going AJ Allmendinger too. Gosh dang! I just remembered though it might rain, and I don't know that he has any rain experience. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, I can't go back. Ty's so, been off. It. Ty's been off. Uh, uh, the rain I'll, will be the equalizer. I'm I'm a, I'm a stick with Ty Gibbs. I can say it. it, it, it he'd sweep Charlotte too if he did that. I'm gonna be real. Like we're watching the chat here. That's they're they're. It's pretty much mostly AJ. Yeah, yeah there's, a lot of, yeah. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot for Ty, but it's mostly AJ. And they're just <laughs> they're they're just referring to him as Randall now. <laughs> wow, Eric, what but have you yeah. done? Now they're gonna I just read like... Wikipedia. It's, <laughs> it's right there. I just Come on, read that's Wikipedia, what all you YouTubers do. We read Wikipedia. Yeah, happy I just birth- read Wikipedia. Happy belated birthday to Ty Gibbs. He turned 19 uh, at the same time Bubba was winning his first race. So happy birthday, yeah. Ty Gibbs. It's funny. I went on Twitter that night, and it's all Bubba, 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 and then and then I look, and it's just Ty Gibbs going, "Thanks for the birthday wishes, everybody." <laughs> like, oh my god! I'm like, <laughs> oh, uh, anyway, that's funny. all right. I like how one person actually put it into the chat, like this Gregson, Gregson. <laughs> Appreciate it. Well, that's our finish. So it feels weird not picking three races this weekend. Yeah, it, it does, and we're not going to have that for a little bit. Wait, did, no. did, wait, did we get the guest pick? I don't remember that. Yeah, it's Almendinger. Oh, okay, yeah. sorry, sorry. All right, well, moving on to the Cup Series, who is going to just absolutely suck it up out there like my pick, Kyle Busch? Oh, uh, B- Bubba, it's a road course, so Bubba Wallace, that's the easy pick. I like going with a playoff driver as long as the playoffs are happening. So of all the playoff guys, you know, <laughs> this is a risky pick because I think he's going to run like sixth and then something's going to go wrong, as has happened almost every race in these playoffs, William Byron. Mm, that's fair. I- I'm – I'm doing the uh, safe pick, Mr. Worson Quinn at the Roval, Kyle Bush. Rage quit. <laughs> Who's the chat got? I feel uh, like it's, I feel it's going to be 18 v it's, 23. I'm, I'm yeah, it's going to be 18 and I'm 23. I'm seeing, seeing, seeing a lot of KP. And the thing is, I have the slow mode turned on, so actually we don't see a lot of people like, repeating as much, so it's going to help us really pick this out. Uh, uh, well, while we're doing that, Noah picks Denny Hamlin as his suck pick. That's bold. Ooh, yeah. yeah. We knew he wasn't going to pick Bubba. 
I see oh. some 18s. I, mean, I think I it's Kyle like, Bush. It looks pretty clearly. <laughs> I think we oh. swayed the masses. Yeah, I think it's Kyle Bush. Yeah, you're going to have to yeah. get Kyle Bush right now. I'll put KFB down then. I've seen like 10 in a row. All right. Kyle Bush for the chat. Now, as far as underdogs, uh, you know, we, we talk about how he hasn't been good, but I think, honestly, I'm going to use the momentum here, and I'm actually going to say Bubba has a better day for his standards on road courses. So yeah. he finished his 21st? Or, like, top 20 at least? <laughs> Something like that? Between 15th to 20th, we'll say that. Okay. okay. That's not bad. That's not bad. Uh, yeah, that, that, I think he'd take that. Because I, I, actually, i got, I got to remember... 2019, the whole drama with him and and Bowman, they he was oh, actually running. Front. He was actually running fairly good in that race, and then mm-hmm. all was that, he like ninth? Yeah, because they were they were doing good. Okay, I'm gonna go with Chase Briscoe here. I mean, come, I mean, we were at the Indy Road Course, nearly won that one. I don't think he'll uh, win this weekend, but um, at least a top ten, I'd say, at least a top ten. So Chase Briscoe. Mm-hmm. I he know this is an underdog. I'm going Kyle Busch. Oh yeah, See, he can't no, he can't finish thirtieth forever. Like, come on. <laughs> or can I, he? I, I don't I don't know why Noah put this guy's as dark horse, but I'll put him down. He put he put Ryan Blaney. So what? that's he, not he, a dark horse. <laughs> I know. No, it was the first no. winner here. All right, yeah. All right, just put it so, down. Just put it down. I, I'm gonna put yeah. an actual real dark horse here. This team has finished in the top twenty, top fifteen, like every Roval race so far. This driver's a talented guy. He just doesn't get a chance to show it. I'm going Ryan Priest. As my underdog. Good. That's good. Good one. That's a good one. Right. Darian, there's a lot of jiggle going on with your hair. The one you went, that was like, hey, I like it. That means I like it. That's what like the is. back of my hair does. Yeah. Gosh. We got top. We got back. I don't know. Danny and I, we kind of just have just hair. hair. We, we have hair. <laughs> okay. And now the best part of this show who's going to win? Oh, the chat, dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. No, dang it. no, no. That is the best part of the show, Darian. To be fair, yeah. I did think the chat had already picked as well. I'd moved on. Sorry, chat. Well, I think what we need to do for Darian is give him a separate itinerary that's completely out of order, and then he'll get it in order. See, I was well, a week off, and now so I'm messing up again. The <laughs> chat seems pretty clearly in Chastain's camp, yes, actually. Yeah, a lot yeah. for Ross Chastain. Yeah. Oh, I see one Eric Jones, though, Eric. I see one Eric Jones. Nah, I'm gonna, Eric I'm, Jones is good there. I'm good gonna, luck losing your money. <laughs> I'm going to give him Ross Chastain. He's the only one I'm saying a lot more than others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's what uh, I'll give him that. Yeah, I see Ross. All right. Oh, I see Bob Pockers got one. Do y'all see that booming kick he ended the uh the yeah and his high with? top socks? Yep, yeah. Bob Pockers is swagging, bro. I, swagging. It got caught, but he kicked that thing deep, made can, it to yeah. deep can, right can, field. Can we get uh, hero cards made of Bob Pockers playing kickball? Hey, someone can make those. Sure. Yeah, someone on Twitter can make those. <laughs> All right, Darren, do your thing now. All right, now I can do it. So who's gonna win? And who's going to win at the Roval this weekend? Danny, go first. He's always done good here, and he's never needed it more. He's never needed it more now than ever. Do it, Bowman. Win, and then we'll go back to oval racing next year. <laughs> Let's see. Because he'll kill oh, the track. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, read, I'll read off Noah's really quick here. Uh, he's got Chase Elliott. Okay. Yeah, I, I, you know what? I was thinking, I was thinking, you know, AJ, you know, he's really good here. I know he's uh, he's on a part time basis in Cup, but I mean, we've seen what he could do. But you know, yeah, Chase Elliott, I'm gonna play it safe this uh, weekend. Chase Elliott. All right, so I'm I'm going for you, right, Eric? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm picking this guy because you know, let's be real, he's awesome at the road courses, uh, and he's done extremely well. You're trolling. Best, I can see this. The year. He, I'm going Kyle Larson on this yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was like waiting for Eric to be like, he, he's trolling me. He's, yeah, yeah that's, that's good though. I mean, he's st- stats are still, I mean, he's out, he's outperformed. He, he, his cars speed wise, as well as uh finish wise, he's outperformed Elliot in four of the last five road course races. The only ones he doesn't do well on are the new tracks. So hmm. that's a good a point. New- it is a good point that chase beat him at, at the, Coda and let's be honest, Larson probably had that car that race won, if not for the heavy rain. Yeah. Uh, and then uh I guess Road America, yeah, it was Chase Elliott. Well, the, so that, that is interesting. Well, and 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 Larson didn't race the Daytona road course and and Elliott was leaps and bounds better than Larson oh, there. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. That's that is interesting. That's well, but, I guess 
The only the only outlier is the Indy Road course where Larson finished one spot ahead of Chase, but they were battling they, for the lead all day. Yeah, they were right with each other all day. That's a good point. I mean, stats aside, you've given me Chase Elliott. I feel like yeah. I have to take Chase Elliott. I'd like to be a little more out, think outside the box. I had some backup picks in mind, but I'm going to go with Chase Elliott. Um, but I think the stats you're citing that we're kind of looking at, it will be close. I think the two of them will be top two, top three all day, maybe some back and forth. But, but yeah, I got to go with Chase Elliott. If you're going to give me Chase, I got to. I'd be foolish to pick anyone else. See, see, this is what's happened a lot this year is I'll pick Larson at the road course and then Elliot wins and I'll pick Elliot at the road course and Larson wins. It's like, do it. pick them between the two of them. Let's do it again. I mean, it might be a trend breaker here, man. Just stay dry on Sunday. I don't know how Chase does in the rain. I don't want to, I don't want to see what happens. Well, we know Larson's well, good. Well, no, no, he, he won at Coda in the rain. So I guess Chase is good in the rain. Never mind. Yeah, but Larson was faster. Well, but Chase, but yeah, he still won the race. He Who was won. the winner? Who was the Mickey? That was what? a. Uh, <laughs> what? Where's my trophy? Where's my trophy? Where's my money, Marsh? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna watch South Park tonight. What's anyway, the, what's the chat if, say? If, That's our. If there, Italian. If, there, if there's a, if there's a, yeah. if there's a Mickey win, there needs to be the the, the goofy winner too. I think Jarrett will get that reference. The goofy winner. <laughs> it will be at Disney World on Friday, so I, that'll give bring Chase Elliott some Mickey magic luck. You know. Coming his way. IDK player was just there too. I'll wear I'll wear a Chase Elliott hat to Disney World. That'll get the, the <laughs> hey, that'll get the yes, kids on Instagram yes. in a frenzy. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I, I'm there. pretty sure they got Elliott. Yeah. yeah. Children of Twitter. It's, uh, it, it's, it's Elliot. It's, it's yeah, it's Elliot. So Danny and me are either going to be really big losers or really big winners this weekend. No in between. And we'll see. This is this is going to be a big one. I feel good about my picks. I feel good about my picks too. Oh, okay. Okay. Hey, J- Jared, I think I know who would be the goofy winner, and it would be Bowman. I'll do it again. <laughs> I'll do it again. I'll do it again. <laughs> All right. I, I, I think I, I think it. I think I think, a, I think a lot of our chat will get that reference. Okay. But I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to say you didn't do it, dummy. But I did do it, and I do it again. I love uh, I love that we can have some comedy every now and again on the show. And yeah. hey, that is that will do it for the Roval race picks. Uh, appreciate. Uh, the chat and the guests for putting their submissions in too. Now let's get into the final super chats before we end it off here tonight. We last we last left up on super chats. We got a new Danny B super fan in the way of hot piss. Now let's restart with GN with the generous five dollars. Appreciate that. Dave Moody said on Sirius XM yesterday that Dega would also need lights for parking lots, infields, and mm-hmm. roads leading to track if lights are installed. So yeah, probably yeah, be more than fifty million. Oh, I, I know. I think it'll be less, but it'll it'll be still be a lot. I mean, it's, yeah. it'll be thirty million. That's still a lot of money. But I've heard that they'd it's, have to potentially upgrade some of like this actual power grid near the tracks. It is kind of remote. Yeah. It's in the middle of nowhere. So yeah, sweet um, home Alabama. And, and, and also, I heard someone talking about how there's like rules with the airport that's there. Yeah, that's what y'all are saying. I didn't yeah. even think about that. There's, so there's a lot of hoops to jump through when we can just move it to yeah. noon. Yeah. Talladega needs to start a Kickstarter for lights. I see that in the chat. <laughs> Just take Talladega and move it over there. TVP83, uh, always good to see to you in our chat, TVP. And welcome to the Danny B Super Fans. Appreciate you becoming a member. Uh, Bush Brothers fan, no comment here. Just a generous $1 donation. Appreciate that, Bush Brothers fan. I uh, hope the Bush Brothers can do well for you in the in the next few races. Vote Kyle 3000, you've been very generous tonight. Appreciate the four ninety nine. Oh. Uh, some, there was someone about, uh, was there like a jingle octopus in the chat earlier or something yeah. like that? I, uh, I'd read off their so, comments in the poll. <laughs> so, John Jacob Jingle Octopus, his name is my name too. That's their super chat. So, appreciate, <laughs> oh, appreciate cool. that. Excellent yeah, singing. Jingle. Yes. Yeah. Good job. Gordon Fed, 1992. That was a good time to start watching Gordon, I guess. $5. Appreciate that. From a Larson fan, congrats, Bubba. It's embarrassing <laughs> being a fan of his sometimes because of how toxic some are and mm, we all get yeah. hurt with these morons that's pretty yeah i can understand where you're coming from Dad. i can you can you can you can tell who um which fans are uh, genuine fan. and not so yeah yeah yeah. i i get that but yeah yeah, yeah. at least I, you're I, one I of get, the good ones though i get being around bad fans i'm a junior fan. same yeah i grew yeah. up a junior fan too yeah they were there's yeah, not interesting i was there's not bad. there's not too many bad bowman fans that i've seen we we, we get them every now and again but i haven't seen too many of them Kansas yeah. fans are perfect oh. yeah <laughs> we should all I have like, like a driver. reunion. They just lay down low and don't really yeah, say anything. Yeah, we should all have a reunion much. someday. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, James Hilburn, welcome to the Danny B Superfans, and also welcome NASCAR Michigan man to the Danny B Superfans. Appreciate you guys for becoming members. And here we, I've seen this in the chat. Uh, something has happened to our friend MVR owner. YouTube has taken down his channel for for claims of uh, harmful content or something like that. Uh, I don't the really... YouTube's just being dumb again. Here but, we go. But he, he's, he's, he's on a backup by way of Tua Tonga Valoa. Uh, he, <laughs> gave, quarterback. he gave $2 <laughs> and he said, I need prayers that my main MVR owner gets restored. Hey, I hope that works out, man. I, I hate yeah. the fact that it happened to you. Yeah. Here is something for... Oh. <laughs> See, I'm looking over to the left. But, uh, and I, I have two screens. I'm looking at the chat, and all of a sudden, I hear. And I'm like, <laughs> I'll get, I'll get a cup and just go like back and forth on here. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was on the day I'll call. <laughs> uh, I'll pour one for MV Roner. Oh, on this one. is the one from Nashville Super Speedway. <laughs> and, and, and also, I just realized you were you were blowing out your mic by doing that too. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, Here's something from something went wrong, and I'm not sure what currency. Yeah, this is I like. didn't know what it was either. I saw that too. It, it's, I didn't it's know 50, what it was. Fifty something, but it's it's not it's not a it's not, it doesn't translate big into American because it's uh, blue, I guess. But hey, we still yeah. appreciate the generosity, even though I don't know what currency this is. And it says, "Let's do a GoFundMe for Talladega Lights." There you go. Now let's just. Uh, how, how can we have Talladega Nights with no Talladega Lights, guys? I mean, how how is that even possible? That's a good point. That is night true. Night vision goggles. I've always asked that question. Yeah, uh, why don't we just race a f- night vision goggles and let's just. Yeah, know. I want to see the spotters with the two. We'll give them like the Jurassic Park ones to cover their whole head. <laughs> All right, uh, and the last super chat we have here, unless anything else comes in, comes in from Gavin Adcock. Appreciate the two dollars. As a Larson fan, Dago was a wake up call, and yeah, I, that is that is really fair. It always is. It feels like you better uh, you better hope nothing goes wrong this weekend. I'm just I'm just saying. Okay, just saying. someone just pointed out what that uh, currency was. It's the Philippines peso. That's what that Whoa. currency is. Hey, all pesos the way in the, the Philippines. All yes. the way from the so Philippines. Appreciate we get pesos here in Texas sometimes from Mexico. Oh yeah. So appreciate the fifty. Philippines pesos there from something went wrong earlier. All right, and uh, that's it for Super Chats, and I think that's going to be it for... Oh, nope. Jacob we got Mills, one more. <laughs> appreciate the $1.99. Poor Byron. Good speed. Bad luck. And I feel, yep. like, that's, I feel like that's been yeah. the definition of a lot of his season, other, other, other than the, the home season. Well, his yeah. second half, definitely. Yeah, why, he's really falling off. Why, why does it feel like that? Both the guys who won Homestead, Xfinity Series and the Cup Series, Matt Snyder and William Byron, why do they just seem to fall off after their win? I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't Something in the air. The yeah. sands of Miami are cursed. Maybe Something. it's like seasons past where everybody wins and their season ends at Miami. <laughs> that's that's perhaps, probably it. Perhaps, yeah. though, 2022 will be a breakout year for both Bowman and Byron next year. We'll see. Well, yeah, we'll see. Well, it's been a breakout year for Bowman, but Byron still yeah. still waiting to see that. Yeah. Uh, hey, check us out next Wednesday night, the NASCAR Weekly Podcast, part of the Out of the Roof Podcast Network. We will be live on my good buddy, the Icebergs Channel, next weekend. That's me. And, or next week, I mean, not next weekend. Next week, Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 Central Time. We got to appreciate everyone who was involved this week. We had Noah Cornelius coming on earlier. You can check him out. Noah Talks NASCAR, also part of the Outer Group Podcast Network. And that'll pretty much wrap us up. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy the show. Jarrett, why don't you go ahead and send us out with some Dale call before we get out of here tonight? What is he talking about? Do it. Do it. I didn't even hear it. I did not even he's, hear it. <laughs>